that theme song means that you are listening to 372 pages. We'll never get back. I am Michael J. Nelson. This is the podcast where, along with my cohort at Riff Tracks, well, and this podcast, I guess, we uh, read some bad books and we talk about them on a podcast that you are now listening to. The person who I do it with, with whom I do it, I don't know, is Connor Lestoka. Connor, how are you? I am good. I, I'm a, proud to be a cohort. You know, I have been at Hort many times, but, you know, only a cohort of yep. few, so it feels good. To... The cohort, but no, there's a proud, isn't that a, is that a Roman, like, legion? I'm part of the cohort. So I can a, 100% a, assure it's... you that I have <laughs> no idea as to the entomology really? of cohort. What? <laughs> I think it's a Roman, uh, it's, a, it's a unit of Roman soldiers, so it's yeah. good. It's a good thing. Okay. We are part of the cohort. Okay. Are we yeah. going to start off this way? Are we going to, should we just... Clap it. All right, let's start again. <laughs> Fine. And theme song, and we're back. All right, we're talking about Twilight today. No uh, no garbage <laughs> banter to start. <laughs> no. We're going right into Midnight Entomology. Yes. 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 We are reading um, the, uh, we're reading the, the, not a prequel, the, the retelling of the Twilight Saga from, uh, from the, from the guy's point of view. Which we have learned last week, I think from a faithful listener, has already been done. Well, it's been done told from a different point of view. Yes, it is. Uh, it's, it's so this pretty is much... the third point of view <laughs> retelling of uh, the Twilight Saga. It pretty much is. We have to hope that Stephanie Meyer does not discover like the Death Star and then just, you know, sort of combines those two things of retelling the origin of the Death Star over and over again from different vampires points of view. Or she reverses the um, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies and just goes Twilight and Dead Presidents or, you know, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Puts in some some stuffy history about Roman legions, perhaps? Ah, Cohorts? Oh, yes. Pride and Prejudice and Cohorts. Well, we do have a Pride and Prejudice going on in this uh, this section, so it all all sort of circling back. Um, that's one of her major influences. We know that. Yeah. And you can certainly read it in the prose. Um, <laughs> it is. It's so, like, uh, uh, I'm sure we've said this before, but like Ernest Klein probably called it to mind when, when local bands put up a, a flyer and want a bassist and they want, uh, you know, influences include, uh, you know, yeah. the five greatest <laughs> bands of all time. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but uh, hit them with the departments. We have them, right? Oh, yeah. Boy, oh, do we. And uh, we, for the first time... In, you know, real or fanfic, I realized that people have actually written fanfic about this, you know, which is mm. sort of how the how the process started in Ready Player One. We'd, we'd look at fanfic uh, people had written and and see if you could tell the difference. And then it sort of started to happen with 64 squares and moon people that our listeners would write, you know, fake fanfic, essentially. But right. there's there's a ton of Twilight fanfic but, out there. So sure, people have been sending a whole that body. In. So, uh, yeah. oh, OK, they've been they've been. Going to the dark web, they've been scouring, yeah, the yeah, dark web and hitting up fanfiction.net. Wow. So there's going to be you got some pros, uh, some ringers, maybe I would say, uh, who have contributed mm, this time. Yeah, so got that to look. Are we allowing to. that? That's the whole gist of the bit. What we've no, been but doing, allowing them to to take their own to grab somebody else's. I mean, we're allowing it. I don't know what the terms of fanfiction.net allow it from a, a reuse standpoint, but like, what are they going to do? What does our Come end get user us. license agreement say about? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, anyway, so let's. Um, yeah, we have everything. We're going to have uh, you know, real or fanfic. We'll have some uh, listener mail. I assume. Oh, yeah. Yep, definitely. So and, we'll be stealing people's mail and some dumb sentences of which there were some dumb sentences abundant. I find they're they're abundant, but um, yeah, they require I find a little more curating than our last uh, quote unquote book. I always have to put scare quotes around our last book. Sure. Um, uh, which was what I always forget. My immortal. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> they're all kind of the same, like the Mister, My Immortal, Midnight Sun. There, there's a lot that runs together, except sticking out, of course, is trucking through time, which of course. is easy to right. pull off the top of your head. But yeah, they're uh, they're less of a. It's like a more subtle, uh, dumb sentence, I would say, in this. It doesn't like smack you across the head with a two by four the way an Ernest Klein dumb sentence or a Dwight David Thrash. Uh, sentence would be these are you sort of have to dig deeper um yeah you have to kind of um you know you have to get the ladder up and go to the nest and kind of gently lift the dumb sentence egg out of the feathery nest and bring it down your treasure 
Right. Yeah. Whereas a uh, a tech war dump sentence was just like grabbing a, a a wild turkey by the neck, like a Alice in Wonderland uh, croquet mallet, and just bashing someone over the head with it until it uh, you know squeezes out an egg. Exactly. See, exactly see that. these see, analogies, the yeah. analogies that you're getting already it's from a metaphor, uh, from just us. like it's... Edward uses later in the book. So, oh, right. but yeah, we, these sections are like forty thousand words that we're reading for this long book. So, um, just keep that in mind when we when we cover the dumb sentences. That is that there was even many more words that did not get taken into consideration for these. Yes, and uh, plot wise, I don't know that we really need to run down. Uh, much for twilight if you have not heard of twilight or have never seen a movie or heard of the movie or know the premise Mm -hmm. you might be listening and i've never said this before you might be listening to the wrong podcast (laughs) i don't i don't know i don't want to say that but you know what i'm saying sure it's it's kind of out there but where are we up to this point in terms of the plot well he's uh edward has met bella and is infatuated with her scent and uh he saved her from getting hit by a car and I think that's it. That was the first 40,000 words of the book. Right, right. There was a, you know, staring at her in a lunchroom scene that I believe was longer than The Old Man and the Sea. Yeah, it was novella that length. chapter alone. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> and so we're, uh, where we are now is he's still, he's, well, I guess we'll get to it, but he's just kind of, he's become infatuated with her because, two reasons, he, her blood smells absolutely delicious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't doubt that. I've smelled some people's blood, <laughs> sure. and it is, at times, if you're hungry, it's it like is a delicious. realtor baking cookies in a house to sort of get that uh, warming, yes. inviting. Smell. And the second thing is that she has uh, inferior skin, and so that blood is sort of like right there next to the surface. Like it's a, what is a, is there a tissue that's only one cell, you know, wide that it, her blood, you know, uh, I think, I assume it's harder. I learned about that after murders. we learned about the cohort entomology in, in high school. So I've sure. forgotten the, the yes. one cell thing, too. <laughs> anaphase. <Yes. laughs> it's anaphase. No, he goes, uh, I think when he was doing his revenge killings, the blood must have been much harder to extract. And it's just like a pain, just a pee. Okay. Yeah. And so her blood is just like sitting there on the surface. Yes. It's like a so. pile of uh, free bird seed that Wiley Coyote is, uh, has, has staked out for the Roadrunner. It's like if uh, Nick Nolte saw that overturned truck of benzene on the freeway. <laughs> That's free benzene, baby. Yes. You got to go get that. Exactly. So, there's, so, so her blood is just right there. So that's where he is. He's, he's checking her out. And so here we are. This is chapter... Five. Five of uh, Midnight Sun. And why don't you dive in with what you got? Well, yeah, it starts off sort of on a, on a high note. The, the last page started with him... Sitting in high school, lamenting it. We played some uh, Simple Minds for you. But uh, this one starts off uh, with, I think, man, uh, it, it makes uh, Ebony Darkness Dementia Way seem sort of like grounded and, and sensible. He says, high school. Wow, that is, that's quite a claim. <laughs> <laughs> high school. Purgatory no longer. It was now purely hell. Torment and fire. Yes, I had both. So he's, yeah, he's, wow. uh, he's like, uh, it's the sort of thing that, you know, he'll be reading, uh, his, his diary, uh, aloud 10 years later talking about how, how much of a drama queen he was back in high school. This is a, uh, this comes up a lot, but I, I think I have the note many times is, you know, again, immortal being 130 some years old. What, what, what is yes, the I think, again? yeah, 118 to 130, something in that range, uh, accumulating, uh, you know, piling up the PhDs. Mm-hmm. I mean, two, if two is piling them up. It's but more those than are just you have. The, that is true. <laughs> Makes more money than you do, man. <laughs> uh, so it's just always, you just have to put everything in that context. It's the, um, I don't know, it's the watching, for me, it's always the watching superhero movies. Is like, this is a guy in, in a costume. And you, you just have to constantly remind yourself, this is like this ancient, wise, it's a creature. It's not even human anymore, and he has all these special abilities. And but it's all happening in high school. I know that's <laughs> obvious. I know that's the thing about. But when you read it, like you know, down to the pores, like we do, it just is every single sentence. Is yes, ridiculous. at face value, it's it's impossible to take seriously. Just because you know, when you think about all he's seen and all the you know, he has no concerns about 
you know, the typical things people worry about. He's never going to, uh, you know, die. His loved ones will never die. He's not going to gain weight. He's not going to, he has no financial worries. And yet he's seen all these horrors in the hundred plus years he's been on the, on the earth. So to see him revert to the stage of sitting there, you know, uh, carving the cool S into the desk while he's bored in uh, biology class is really just pathetic. It is. It is. <laughs> um, my first note is about his uh, transportation, which we've talked about already. Here's the sentence. That afternoon, as soon as school was finished, my role played, I ran halfway to Seattle. Yeah. As I had the day before. So yeah. he ran halfway to Seattle. First of all, <laughs> why does he even have a car? And he doesn't seem to mind being, you know, risk being seen sprinting around Benny Hill style. Right. Like the Flash, I so, guess. Yeah, one or the other. But I mean, people presumably could see him, right? Or is he, is he running at a speed that... You cannot see him. I, I'm not clear on that. Well, so if he's running at a speed you can't see him, it seems like you know going halfway to Seattle is a bit of a, a bit of a cop out. I would say. I looked it up. It was 138 miles to get from Forks to oh, Seattle, okay. but it, you have to. It's a four hour drive because you you can't cut through a big swath of Olympia National Park. So, um, oh okay. I'm not yeah. sure if he's running as the crow flies through the park or what. But I mean, that's what I would do as opposed to the highway. I also got roasted by people because I put in uh, the Twitter bio for the 372 account that uh i change the location every time we're doing a new book so for like chad and dale it was uh, wyoming or whatever um sure for uh, you know ebony, ebony darkness it was hogwarts so i put forks oregon and uh mm. yeah they, the mm -mm. the jackals were out in force mocking that decision which you know i'm i'm happy that i don't know which of the two states it could have been in was the correct one but um you know roast yeah, away <laughs> You can you can but, stop uh, I think hosting if you want to. It, it was embarrassing. Please uh, mail your 372 card to I me. Will. Yeah, I will destroy it in the shredder. Goodbye, everybody. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, let me read this one. Uh, I got to read my way into it. Had Bella noticed how Tara was usually ostracized by the rest of the class, I could imagine no reason besides kindness for reaching out to her, especially with Bella's shyness in the way. I wondered how much discomfort it had caused her and decided it was probably more than any other human here would have been willing to go through for a stranger. And I just, just to be clear, Tara was one of the humans you'd made plans to tear into pieces <laughs> like freshly baked bread just a couple days prior. Right. Like yeah. you were plotting her murder down to the first, I go to the left, I make a slight feint, I twist around 180, I snap Tara's head off. Right. Maybe lick a little of the, you know, the stem of her neck as I twist it. Right. And now he's like, gee, I wonder how Tara, Tara seems nice. <laughs> it's just, and so he it's pretty, an odd turnaround. He pretty much, so but the, Tara was a stoner, I think, that like Bella asked to join a group biology project. And he, so he's d describing it. That passage you read is like as if she's, you know, uh, you know, Mother Teresa, like walking amongst the lepers or something like that, where it's like. Uh, you know, <laughs> at some point in time, everyone has to be part of a group. So she might have just gotten ahead of it there. Right. Um, yes. But like she so this this is sort of like meant to uh, a lot of this chapter builds up Bella's like Mary Sue credentials here. And so being yeah, you know, she's she's saving the cat. She's, yes. <laughs> she's like obviously very sweet. She's going to climb up a tree and save a cat. And that's clear all that she's doing, because this uh, this uh, little anecdote. Uh, resolves itself in quite a dramatic fashion. Listen to this. Given Bella's grasp of biology, I wondered if the grade from this project would even save Tara from failure, in this class at least. And that was exactly what happened. So, all right. <laughs> that's that's the Tara story, everybody. That's, uh, you know, I'm glad we got that detail. Now, when I had survived World War I... <laughs> uh, <and> <laughs> <laughs> but let's get back to the biology class. Right, yes. He saved with the With Mr. Banner. Yes. Uh, Mr. Banner also had a weird, uh, he sort of thought about the, the class. Uh, he says, uh, Mr. Banner thinks, no one ever gives that kid a chance regarding Tara. That's nice of Bella. She's kinder than most of these cannibals. So the teacher is, <laughs> yes. that's how he's he's describing his, his students, not knowing that one of them, yes, was planning to slaughter him and everybody else. Um, so... Who knows if that's missed a, opportunity to call them jackals? Yeah, possibly. Leave, that would be I'll, great. I'll leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the the thing then becomes the thing being the book. 
that we're talking about becomes very Mike Newton centric. My God, I'm, I'm torn. I'm torn about this. Yeah, why are um, you torn? Because I'm I'm, fr- I'm quite frustrated by it too. But I'll I'll let you go first. Well, it's just like it's it's funny. He's like some of Mike Newton is funny. Like Mike Newton in his head says, "I mean, I guess some of the costumes are cool." Slave Leia. So- <laughs> Talking about, I guess, going to see Star Wars. They're going to Comic Con because uh, that's when some guys Comic Con, uh, ideal yeah. vacation. Yes, but I mean, I don't know. He seems he he gets inside of Edward's head again. Immortal monster. Right. Yeah, made he of was stone. in the trenches. Yeah, and he could not be just more of a bigger just dick bag. <laughs> <laughs> and that amuses me. But it is he's also sort of I can see why he gets into his head because he is irritating. <laughs> Yeah, and he's willing to he's willing to sort of debase himself as we see later. He's uh he's got some strange like uh guy who spends way too much time on Reddit energy about him. But uh Yeah, he does. <laughs> uh but he he also throughout the entire book here, uh this you know, this when he mentions going to see slave Leia's at the uh, convention, it's that's the only real like he keeps talking about like Mike's horny fantasies. But he always just alludes to them. He's like, and then what Mike was thinking would disgust even the most debased person. But, you know, I, I'm irritated that they never share what Mike is thinking because uh, it just it would it'd make his character that much more despicable, I think, to share it. It is. It's a theme in this. I have that a number of times when people are, he, he alludes to things that in people's heads like, look, you got to go all in on this trope. Yeah. That he can read people's thoughts. Give us Mike Newton's thoughts, for God's sake. Right. Stop saying he was so lascivious. Like, I want to hear. <laughs> yeah. Is he I putting Bella into the cow costume? Like, is he, you know. <laughs> yes. What kind of rig is he describing? Yeah. Please. <laughs> is he, is there some sort of like, you know, weird prophase sex thing or something? Like, it's, we, we need to know. <laughs> yes. Especially like considering, you know, the, the, the level of explicitness in the mister, which uh, I, I guess, once again, this is inappropriate to talk about the high school kids, but still. Yes, no. yes, I, I understand. Uh, all right, m- more Mike Newton. <laughs> he is described as, and this becomes a trope that I assume irritates you as much as me, is the, uh, again, the 118 to 130-year-old guy who's seen everything. And right there was the most surprising of my torments, Mike Newton. <laughs> Who would have ever dreamed that such a generic, boring mortal could be so infuriating? <laughs> like he keeps being, it's like Lucy in the football. Like, you got to stop trying to kick that thing, man. Yes, it's... Just forget about Mike <laughs> Newton. <laughs> right. Or, you know, it's like ha- let Mike Newton, Newton have a tragic, you know, cougar mauling accident or, you know, falling off the rocks at La Push. Like you've got a pretty quick yes. solution out of this problem for a guy that obviously no one would really miss because he's sort of a dick yet at this oh oh, here's here's uh i'm just reading on i think it's like a line down all the same i frequently amused myself by imagining backhanding him across the room (laughs) and into the far wall (laughs) frequently (laughs) and and how how many times a day would you say (laughs) Yeah, it doesn't uh, it doesn't cast either of them in a very positive light because uh, you know Mike, though he may not be uh, likable, is uh, sounds like a fairly standard teenage boy. Right, and and so the the monster inside him, as we uh, seems to back that phrase down. She seems to back that phrase down in this uh, reading of ours. But uh, again, the immortal monster. What he does with his time is to frequently imagine slamming a high school back, <laughs> handing him across the room. Just, just pointing that out again. Right. Uh, yeah. The monster was back down. I had some. I had some quotes about it was stronger than before. Rejoicing. The monster liked that. The monster inside me hissed with annoyance. So we'll see. We'll see how, um, how if she's able to keep that up. Okay, because I I tracked but didn't do a very good job of it. Maybe someone else did on. Uh, Bella blushing. Okay, is great. A, is a trope. It does come up, but I just didn't track it as as diligently as I should have. And on that same note, for him, uh, Edward does a lot of chuckling uh, this time around. He uh, oh, there's hu- the humor flows yeah, freely. We're get, we'll, we'll get to that. But <laughs> yes. Uh, but so the whole uh, reason he's obsessed with Mike Newton is because there's a dance coming up. And when I was in high school, they called this the Sadie Hawkins dance. Yes, yeah, it was, yeah, uh, they don't call it a common name for okay, it, which is based on Little Abner, I believe, the uh, comic strip. Uh, 
So, you know, little Abner, but cohort makes you run for the exit. <laughs> we All saw right. a musical okay. of it one like summer and probably. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's a dance. And so every single guy is hoping that Bella is going to ask them. And yet she's not asking anybody. So they, these, these dweebs have decided that they're going to flout the one convention about this whole dance and like try to get her to ask them. So uh, Mike uh, is in an uncomfortable bind. Edward is enjoying his discomfort more than I should have because Jessica Stanley had asked him to the dance. But, uh, mm-hmm. but, so he, but he still wants to go with Bella. And he says, Edward says, to think it had come to this, I was utterly fixated on the petty high school dramas that I'd once held so in contempt. And I was just like, yeah, man, it, it, it really does suck that you are fixated on this because we're reading all of your thoughts here. And <laughs> if you just... If, if, if only there was some mechanism in your skull that would cause you to stop doing this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if there was some sort of choice or something. Uh, yeah. Right. But uh, so he watches Mike, or maybe he just overhears it. Mike comes up to her, and this is where he has that sort of uh, Reddit incel vibe. He says, uh, hey, Bella, like, I was wondering if you were planning on asking me to the dance. And she's like, no. And then he keeps digging. He's like, well, did you already ask someone? And she says she's going to be in Seattle. And he goes, can't you go to Seattle another weekend? So the sweat is just pouring off him as he's as he's trying to play it cool here. Yeah, Mike does not come off well here, but neither does, uh, as Edward watches on, pain and rage as she's like turning this guy down because she realizes that someone else might eventually ask her to a dance and she'll say yes. Oh my God, yeah. He says, uh, and it just goes on and on. It's like, relax, dude. <laughs> yeah, she was lovely and intriguing, and human males were not oblivious to, to this fact. Whether she would settle for someone in this lackluster crowd or wait until she was free from forks, the day would come that she would say yes. So well done, Kreskin. You're, you're thinking that this wildly appealing girl is evidently going to find someone to be romantically involved with. That's uh, some grade A prognosticating. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Um, this is a, uh, so we had the trope, I think last week of the, uh, long fingers, correct? Long hands. Yes. Uh, this is, this came out of nowhere and I'll just <laughs> read it and see if you, uh, it just shocked me. Her eyes tightened. And I remembered that I had said those words to her before, just before breaking a promise. I winced when her teeth clenched together with a sharp click. Yes. Yes. I did note that. The we ice- have... The Iceman click. We have an Iceman tooth snap in here. <laughs> How many of our... We had it in bad books before. I don't. I think it was at least two, maybe three. I'm but, pretty sure uh, it was again. in Tech War, and I'm pretty sure it was in The Mister. Yeah. Uh, it, was in, it was in Shadow Moon, maybe? Like, I have... Uh, Armada, I believe, had it, which could have been a reference to uh, to the movie, but yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I think have most people... Ever- clicked your teeth at anyone no sometimes like at night you know in the middle while you're sleeping that type of thing but well, that's bruxism that you know that's a condition <laughs> but it's not uh yeah no not at all it doesn't happen okay that's just weird that it came up again that is so bizarre <laughs> I, I i guess if you're looking for this type of thing it, it maybe it stands out and but if, yeah why does it keep coming up why do these bad books but, all I have mean, these was... same threads yeah, I don't know. And and I'll read it again. He winced when her teeth clenched together. So this is a, and he says a sharp click. Yeah. So I, this is like, this yeah, is hey. nice, man. It does yeah. make you wince. I get I, I don't like, you know, that's not a good, it's like a rubbing a balloon to me, but. Do you know people who do the, the they bite the fork? Uh, no. But you know, as they pull it out of their mouth uh, and it makes that little. No, that one causes, like, I have to leave the room. Uh, it's like, could you. Please not do that. Like what? I didn't even notice it. Like how can you drag your teeth across a fork? Yeah, really. Uh, anyway, that's what the tooth click is like to me. <laughs> uh, but then uh, she, he, she, he, I guess another guy asks her out. I forget this guy's name. He has not played a big role. He might have been the guy that wanted to go to Comic Con. She turns him down. Um, and then oh she, please, are, are you are you downplaying Eric and Tyler? Uh, well, I know Tyler Crowley, please, but yeah, Eric, I guess. Sure, is the okay, so guy. it's Eric is the Eric is the second guy. Yeah. Right. So then he says, maybe she liked average boys. I winced at that thought. I could never be an average boy, and I wrote just, you are a hundred and ten years old and fought in the Great War. <laughs> like, <well. laughs> he's he's like a step away from strapping on a diaper and you know being just like, I'm, I'm an average boy, Bella. <laughs> Oh, this is what he's fantasizing about, too. He's yeah. just obsessing over it. 
and annoyed when his family notices it. You right. know, when they do the very sensible thing of saying, hey, Get your man, act together, man. you this know is... that this is bizarre, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you really need to stop doing this. He's like, I don't want to hear that from these people. Yeah, he's a sullen teenager. He's just like, man. But if everyone's telling you you're drunk, it's time to sit down, man. <laughs> That's just you're 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 barking up the wrong tree here. But he's not all he's not all agony and 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 sullenness and all that. He does have some laughs here, and no more so than when he uh, blocks Bella's car in so that Tyler Crowley can approach her and be the third guy to ask her to this dance. Oh yes, man. yeah, yes so indeed. He says, "I was right to have waited for this." Bella turns him down, of course. The horrified expression on her face was priceless. She had no feelings for any of these human males who wished to court her. Also, her expression was possibly the funniest thing I'd ever seen. And so then he drives home with his brothers and sisters and says, no one spoke to me on the way home. I continued to chuckle every now and then thinking of Bella's face. How funny could this have possibly been? I mean, make the funniest face you can imagine. And she has to be 20 times that funny. Oh, well, this th- this leads into my, uh, I have a visual challenge for our, all we can do is present it to our listeners and you can, you know, if you're listening with another person and both do it to each other. Okay. So there's there's that one, make that funny face the that fun- keeps yeah. him laughing <laughs> the entire car ride home. <laughs> okay. And now here's an even more subtle one. That one might be easy. This one is very hard. Okay. She glowered toward the back of my car without meeting my gaze. Looking as if she wished she were driving a tank rather than a rusted Chevy. <laughs> so, I, that's, I mean, yeah, that's uh, got to get Stanislavski. That was the final test in his acting schools. I think was convey uh, that with right a, with just a glare. Yeah, rem- remember the the classic uh, make him laugh when he kind of like he pushes his hands over his face and twists his face in different directions. All you have to do is make your face look like you were driving a tank rather than a rusted Chevy. Wished you were driving a tank, so it's a, yes. it's a theoretical thing you're wishing. It's theoretical. It has to. You have to convey that to your acting partner, like it's on a card, <laughs> and you have to. Con- hmm, what is that face? Oh, oh, uh, so, uh, a tank. Driving a tank instead of a Chevy. Yes. Yeah, that's when you're playing charades and people accuse you of cheating or somehow like you know signaling with other yeah. things that you're. But it reminded me of yes. one of my one of my favorite uh, stories that a friend told me. My friend Andrew one time said he was just like driving somewhere with his dad, probably in high school or middle school or something, just in silence. But uh, you know, after a, a couple minutes of silence, his dad just goes, <laughs> uh, "John Candy." <laughs> so, so I mean, you know, if, that, if that's what Edward's doing, I sort of relate to him. If he's just calling back that fond memory of Bella's funny face in the way that you would uh, a great John Candy moment. <laughs> Do you, did he say was it to try to get him to ask, like, what are you talking about? I, I, I never really got the sense of whether he which had, moment he was trying uh, to draw him out, but uh, no. Oh, was, oh, that. Oh, no. It's just when John Candy was, you know, Uncle Buck, and uh, <laughs> oh, you've never seen it. <laughs> We're driving to the theater right now. Right. Uh, but yeah, maybe if John Candy was wishing he was driving a tank instead of the uh, van in uh, Home Alone or something. Right. Uh, by the way, did not track, although someone should as well, the throat scorching, the thirst. Oh, man. Yeah, the that, thirst. That stacks up to a level that is just, I just skip over it. <sighs> okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, the first one uh, I noted said, the questions had stabbed and twisted like the thirst that attacked me every time I breathed. And I was like, well, that's not even how they describe thirst if it's in an ad for like Surge or, uh, you know, Mountain Dew, like thirst stabbing and twisting. <laughs> yeah, he's not good at it. Right. Um, here's, uh, unless you have a note before this, I have uh, the, uh, he gets into the, the way that they survive mm-hmm. as a family. Sure. The Collins. Go ahead. I thought of the multitude of illegal documents my family needed to live as we liked. False names and false histories, driver's licenses that let us enroll in school, and medical credentials that allowed Carlisle to work as a doctor. Papers that made our strange grouping of nearly identical aged adults comprehensible as a family. (laughs) And uh, that's, again, those are the details. Right, yes. I, I want that... 
I know it may sound, you know, like, I guess if you're a teen girl or something, you want the, the romance, the brewing romance that can never be, the doomed romance. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I want the going to uh, bureaus and filling <laughs> things out. The nitty gritty. And how does that work? Yeah. And so I, of course, dove to the... Uh, I dove to the the dark web. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, that's you know. So and go uh, for the I did not find anything. Blah. Well, bury the lead. So I, I'm sorry about that. But I emptied the uh, 372 account and and hired uh, oh, the, the bank uh, account. 372 players. Oh yes. Yep. Huh. But it was worth it. Wow. And, uh, well, that's I guess for both of us to judge. I think you will. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll at the end of this, you'll. Uh, You'll figure it out well, whether yeah. or not it was. I kind of, but either way, it's it's gone. I mean, it's not. I've been talking to David. Could you Cross, file the I uh, ten? That was going to ten forty nines on those or whatever as well. Yeah, I, I appreciate I that. Can do that. I, Is that the right we form? Well, talked anyway. about it. No, I'll I'll look into it. Whether that's the right form. Okay. Because, yeah, that's sort of, sort of on me. That's where the. Yes. Thanks. I appreciate that. And uh, and so I just said, go wild. How does this look? What is it like when a, uh, you know, when it, an, an ancient undead creature has to go and fill out false forms over and over again. And so this is what they what they did. What? So this is what the the players came up with. So welcoming back, let's give them a big hand, the 372 players. Next. Uh yeah, I got the stamp for my garbage bin but did not receive the one for my recycling. Name Edward Cullen. Address uh, 1901 Seattle Road. Oh, right. The house with the big dining table by the window at which there is never any food being served. Hmm. Occupation? I am a junior in high school. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) In fact, I have a pass from my biology teacher to be here. Oh, sure, right, yeah. No, Mm -hmm. it's true. Show me a stage of mitosis and I can identify it. Yeah, we're not equipped with mitosis slides here at City Hall. Father's name? Carlisle Cullen. Dr. Cullen? The guy who is obviously the same age as you? Yes, that's him. The one who doesn't breathe when he examines you? Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's right. Well, Edward Cullen, you are quite obviously some sort of eternal, lifeless monster and not a high school student. Harry, yeah? Take a look at this guy. What, what do you make of him? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that ain't a guy. That's one of them vampires. Not a, not a werewolf? No, no. They they hang out at La Push. This is one of them... <clears throat> excuse me. Fawn-eating weirdos? Give him his stamp. Uh, all right, Edward. Here's your stamp. I filled out the age line with a 130. It's just a guess. No, I'm 17. Really? Get back to class, freak. (sighs) Great. Now I still have the DMV, and I gotta get a library card. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. Well, that's... Worth it, exactly. Worth it is one way to, I mean, describe it in the sense that, you know, it was... Money was paid and a service was rendered, but... uh, Yeah, I've been been talking to David Cross, actually, about doing a sort of extended... Uh, guest bit, um, you know, showing up, promoting it to his millions of followers. Uh, he was doing, it was going to be a reasonable rate too, but I, oh really? You know, oh, that was you know what? Going to bring in some of the now that you mention it. And yeah, that might have been a good better use. Might have been a good use. Let me make a note of that next time. Do not extort Connor. or embezzle without running it by Connor. Okay, next time ask Connor. No. All right. Okay, <laughs> got it. Done and done. No, Business out of the way. Sorry you had to see the sausage being made. Yeah, folks. that's okay. We've done it before. But yeah, no, that was a good, uh, very accurate, I think, and probably what uh, what would have gone down there. I liked the end of that sentence, too, as he continued the uh, the description of you know what they had to do. He says, uh, yeah. uh, none of it would be necessary if we didn't have to have brief periods of permanence, if we didn't prefer to have a home. Then, of course, there was the way we funded our lives. Insider trading laws didn't apply to psychics, but it certainly wasn't honest what we did. And the transfer of inheritances from one fabricated name to another wasn't legal either. And then there were all the murders. 
<laughs> see, I'm glad you hired Norm McDonald to read the last slide. Yeah, that's uh, just sort of, again, seemed uh, burying the lead. Uh, you've got insider trading and, uh, you know, vaguely uh, gray area inheritance law. But then, of course, all the murders your family's covering up. Yeah, I, I do like that he uh, he does get into that in a little more granular detail later, which is very nice. That's uh, that's very fun. Yes. But, yeah, obviously we'll get to that. <laughs> Uh, well, so I believe he uh, does his first visit to her house now. Oh, yes. He starts uh, yeah, yeah. climbing in her window. Um, the, and the first thing, you know, so this is obviously quite, you know, creepy. Uh, he's just pretty much watching her sleep. But he also notes that she, uh, her inexpensive CD player. And he very much wanted to go read the titles of her books and CDs, but I was determined to take no more risks. So the mystery lingers of what she's reading and listening to. But uh, I did also like the inexpensive CD player because it implies that Edward is discerning in that. So he might be one of those like Steely Dan guys calibrating your like listening room, hi-fi type of thing, which would, you know, uh, probably the only way to make him even more loathsome. Right. What what sort of a, a bit rate? Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's, mm. <laughs> that's pretty low end. Uh, uh, but... He, he talks about the risk, and so he does the least risky thing because he's going to take no more risks. Instead, I went to sit in an old rocking chair in the far corner of the room <laughs> where, where he will look completely normal and natural right. and at home. Let's take the chair yes. that involves constant motion and, uh, you know, it's probably going to be just creaky and, you know, also a weird thing for a teenage girl to have in her room. So, really old guys, if you don't want to take any risks, go into a sleeping teenage girl's room and sit in a rocking chair in the corner and watch her sleep. <laughs> and then you're, you're that's the safest path you can take. Right. <laughs> that is 372 pages approved behavior for everyone. <laughs> Good, <yes. laughs> uh, he also they he he wedges the title of the book in here. Uh, he says my life was an unending unchanging midnight. It must, by necessity, always be midnight for me. So how is it possible that the sun was rising now in the middle of my midnight? Which is just, you know, it's equivalent to someone uh, turning to the camera and being like, well, the Empire sure is striking back, aren't they? <laughs> um, he does. Did, did you note the uh, the killing of the, the hobo spider? Oh yeah, right. <laughs> was that in the? I think that was might have been in the movie. I recall something like that. Oh man, about, I don't remember. I did, I did. And I think it's a it's a you know reference to um, uh, Bram Stoker's Oh brother Dracula, mm. <laughs> our favorite author of all time, <laughs> Bram Stoker. But he says um, my arrival must have disturbed it. Uh, Eratinja agrestis, a hobo spider from its size, a juvenile male. Wow. So, just noted there, one of the things that he did during the 118 to 130 years he's been around is study from hobo spider sizes, whether or not they were <laughs> juvenile and whether or not they were male or female. Well, so. are, we, are we told what the two PhDs were in? One could be in uh, arachnology That's true. or something. It's true. That is true. <laughs> yep. But then, I don't know if that uh, bodes with his reaching out one finger and crushing it silently. Mm. Well, he might realize that they're an invasive species in this part of Washington, and so he's uh, he's trying to wipe them out uh, since he's so familiar with their uh, biology. Yes, uh, but this begins the you know the next phase of his life, which is to uh, obsessively follow her around and help her. Yeah, he's he's on. nuts. Yeah. He's sort of going into full Howard Hughes mode because he's like he's worried that a meteorite is going to hit her. Uh, he's worried about gar gas leaks in her house. He's worried uh, about uh, venomous snakes, scorpions, or centipedes. So he's just like, you know, he's refusing to, to leave his hyperbaric chamber or something because he's just terrified that something will happen to her no matter what. Which is a weird thing because he, he seems to be sort of unfamiliar with humans, like his whole, you know, uh, Mr. Spock deal of right. going, these human males which I am completely unfamiliar with, and yet I know which kinds of spiders are dangerous to them. <laughs> right. It's just a weird dichotomy. Like, I am so separated from them. But what if she falls and gets a boo-boo? <laughs> like, you, you can't have it both ways, man. You either know what they're about or you don't. Yeah, well, and it seems he does not know what they're about because he gets into the uh, the sort of mystery fashion. Remember in Miss the Mister where, like, 
these two people would just be like all agog over each other and then like one minor thing would happen like she would forget to like uh you know clean up a spill and he'd be like oh my god she must loathe me with the heat of a thousand suns um she lists, she says in her sleep edward don't go and so he takes that to mean that she must hate him all my plotting and planning was entirely moot if she didn't care for me her dream could have been about something completely random i was such an arrogant fool it's like oh, what's it gonna take man <laughs> edward i love you oh my god oh it's all over oh you must hate me yeah um, and what is his, I, I, it's probably in here somewhere. What is his ultimate plan? It's that she becomes friends with, what's her name? Is uh, it Alice? Alice. Yeah. Well. And somehow that just all works out. Like, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's like the, the thing of like, you know, your, your sister bringing over her friend you have a crush on. And so you're, you're all into that. Um, but I, I don't really know what the, what the plan, so to speak okay. is. Okay, so the, it is just sort of spinning out. That the plan for now is follow her everywhere she goes, sit in a rocking chair in the corner, and crush spiders while she sleeps. <laughs> yes, right, Alice. That's okay. what Alice would right. want. Um, Fair enough. And that's all I have. It ends with him uh, demanding point blank if she will go to Seattle with him. Yes. So we yep, have. That's all I have. So we've got that to look forward to. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's chapter five. Chapter six is called Blood Type. And this gets some uh, some good stuff, some some action, some Mike Newton, some uh, horny adults for teenagers. So let's go right in. Yes, indeed. My first thing to you is a physical challenge. Oh, boy. And I'm sorry. These ca- I wish they were all Sonic. It's just a different kind of... This, we'll have them, I'm sure. Okay, yeah. I don't think I have I've got ones. one here. Yeah. She stared for a moment, and then her forehead crumpled, and her eyes dropped to the floor. Oh, God. So, Okay. Stared for a moment, then her forehead crumpled, <laughs> and her eyes dropped to the floor. So I can't, obviously you don't. Yeah. You don't have to take that literally. You don't have to drop your eyes out of your head but onto the floor. A forehead crumpling. I can think of a. Uh, you raise your eyebrows and your forehead sort of wrinkles up. Crumpling, I would say, is like uh, the opposite of that. Well, you you know we've all seen when you get in an accident, you crumple your fender, <laughs> or you take a piece of paper, yes. and you crumple it up. Yeah. So I was just wondering at that, like, what is happening up there on that forehead? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe she so, has a lot of, like, loose skin from some sort of graft or something. Like, Well, we know her skin sucks. <laughs> it's the worst skin ever. It yeah. barely does anything. So when it crumples, is it less translucent since it's sort of bunched into layers? Right. I don't know. Maybe there's a, uh, is there some phone filter on TikTok or something? Oh, yeah, probably. There is. Forehead? There's there's definitely yeah. some, that's that's probably what it looks like. we got to get the Bella filter. Makes everyone's skin yep. translucent and uh, makes <laughs> Mike Newson lust after you. Uh, I like, this was another example of that. He says, I followed her all day through other people's eyes, barely around, aware of my own surroundings. Not Mike Newton's eyes, because I couldn't stand any more of his offensive fantasies. There he is. What is he doing? Yeah. <laughs> I remember hearing years ago that, uh, you know, that it was that statistic that just a fake statistic before there were listicles and things like a man thinks about sex like 25 times an hour. Right. Or something. Yeah. Like, no, no, I don't. I mean, no. <laughs> right. That's just absolutely not true. It's like, no, you do, though. You just don't know it. Like, no. Yeah. Well, that- I'm aware of my own thoughts. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, maybe uh, maybe Mike Newton is uh, is skewing the table for everybody. He's the one. Do- yeah, he has a thousand per hour. <laughs> uh, but this was all. Also- uh, we finally get, by the way, an identification of music. Oh, yeah. Which yep. we've been complaining about. Yeah. You can go ahead with that because I'm worried I'll pronounce it wrong. I put on my favorite calming CD, the same one I'd listened to that first day, but I wasn't hearing Debussy's notes for long. So, I mean, it comes up later, and I, I you know, like he says, uh, and it's Claire de Lune. Okay, so that's... Which is like... Basic. Yes. And he says, you know Debussy? Okay. <laughs> or Debu- Debussy, depending on how you want to do it. Yeah, uh, I bought Amazon's 1,000 classical musical <laughs> essential store for 99 cents yeah. back in, you know, yes, I know WC's <laughs> Claire de Lune. All right, good. You know, every child had to play it as they, the uh, you know, their third level uh, piano uh, teacher made them do it. Yeah, it's know? one of those. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that's. Yes, yeah. I know it. 
But he doesn't. He doesn't get to, get to listen to that for long because he's interrupted by hearing Mike's thoughts that like, oh no, Bella's passing out. And uh, so this one, I, I may be, I may be putting my foot in my mouth here, but they have been doing an activity that uh, doesn't seem like it's an actually thing that high school students do, where they draw their own blood and then test it. It is not a thing. Okay, no. that seems like you're just setting yourself up for a wide variety of horrible things to happen in the class if you're just like, all right, now just uh, start letting some blood from your partner, and then we're going to like gather that somehow, and then doing you know exams on it. No. I mean, I I did not go to school in a small town in Washington State, but uh, <laughs> I don't think that that is probably allowed, even when this uh, was purported to be, uh, you know, taking place. Right. Yes. And so, nevertheless, though, it causes Bella to pass out uh, because the uh, scent of blood is something she can smell. She says it smells like rust and salt. Hmm. Is that your experience? Uh, I mean, I think people talk about maybe tasting rust when they taste blood, but I the salt sort of threw me for a loop. Uh, just in terms of salt having a smell was strange to me. That is very strange. Yes, okay. good. It's the uh, I uh, someone I think Bridget got it from someone the uh, the grind salt grinder. Okay, yeah. Are you familiar with this? Uh, yeah, concept? I mean, I understand. I, I I'm familiar with it. I don't have one. There's. There's no such thing as like fresh ground salt, right? <laughs> to get that, to get that nice fresh, like once you yo oh, you crack into that nugget of salt, right. you get that ah, there's the smell of the salt. <laughs> yeah, it's hundreds of years old, probably these crystals. Or <laughs> <laughs> no, it it can just be sitting in whatever size you need it. You don't need to crack it at the last minute. Uh, but yeah, she. Uh, so this visit to the nurse's office, my yeah. God. Yep. Again, name another novella, I don't know, of Mice and Men. <laughs> this is much longer than that. Um, yeah, I like So in a couple other things, uh, he was looking at Mike Newton and chuckling about how vulgar he was. But then he goes here and the teacher, I guess Mrs. Hammond, the attendant, says, uh, he says, she's just a little faint, I reassured Mrs. Hammond. They're blood typing in biology. She nodded, understanding now. There's always one. I stifled a laugh. And then soon after that, does this happen a lot? The nurse asked. Sometimes, Bella admitted. I tried to disguise my laughter as coughing. Is he okay? Like, is he? Yes, I have the same. Like, what is happening? <laughs> it, it's just, I guess it's the monster in him. It's a different species. They have a different sense of humor. You know, humor is just completely different. It's like you hear, uh, let's see, you hear Chinese music with quarter tones and stuff. And you just go, I don't, I don't understand it. It's not. It's not Western music, so I just don't have the the reference to right. it. And I guess their humor is it's I, it's I don't at the have level the, of the like uh, NFL pregame show with like Terry Bradshaw and Jimmy Johnson just yucking it up over anything someone says. Like everything is a laugh line on those shows, and I guess Edward would fit in as a pundit there. Do you do you think that maybe he the whole time was thinking of John? It probably must have been. <laughs> it's yeah. it'd be uh, quite a reveal. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's cutting up like crazy. But I also noted, so another person comes in having fainted from these blood tests. Mm. And that again, so should they not have been aware of this and prepared right, for it? Just like, have a triage unit set Yeah, up it to... does happen sometimes. People do drop to the ground, <laughs> which is a very dire, you know, this is... This is very dangerous. Right. And, th and then there's just but it happens, and then we just drag them into the nurse's office. Yeah, and what's happening to their blood? There's just blood spraying all around the classroom when they're passing out. And I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so they, well, as they're in there, um, I think maybe once she's been deemed okay or something. But Mike, he, he, Mike is like wanting to take Bella to the thing, and Edward's like, you know, take off type of thing. But as Mike leaves, uh, he's he's resentful, of course, and he says. Uh, Mike shuffled off to his class, his thoughts full of ire. What does she see in that freak? Sure, he's rich, I guess. Girls think he's hot, but I don't see that. Too perfect. I bet his dad experiments with plastic surgery on all of them. And it just got me thinking, like, the you know, the 372 players. Like, they're not exactly flying under the radar here, if that's the sort of rumor right. people are thinking. Because that's a pretty <laughs> uh, pretty high-level one in terms of, uh, you, know, you know, things getting passed around as gossip at school. Yes. Uh, again, Mike and his thoughts do not come off well here. <laughs> uh, 
I like the one where he says, we're meeting at my dad's store at 10. And then his thought is, so he just immediately shifts it. And Cullen's not invited. <laughs> so it's like, right. Yeah. Mike, Mike is able to, yeah. I just don't have that ability. If you're speaking, do you then, you can just like put in your silent thoughts after. Yeah. It? Thought bubbles in a comic form, I guess. You're just, uh, that's how they work. Yeah. Except when they're about the interesting stuff and then we don't get to hear them. Nope. But we do get to hear Mrs. So, uh, Cope's thoughts. She's the one I oh, yeah. had to look earlier. She's the same uh, teacher who was all you know, thinking about him earlier and saying, calm down, he's 17 or whatever. Uh, her eyelashes fluttered and her heart sped up. Get a hold of yourself. Yes, that was interesting. When Shelley Cope's pulse frightened, it quickened. It was because she found me physically attractive, not because she was frightened. Um, so he's just sort of he's just sort of dropping that as an aside. Yeah, that becomes like a thing, right? Because he's he's going into this uh, nurturing father, you know, seahorse mode with her, mm-hmm. and so it's changing something about his monster demeanor. Yeah, it's, it's explained. It's explained In later. The restaurant, right? yeah, they get to it. How it just yeah. his his love for her is making his yeah his true beauty self instead of the monster show off to people. Okay. Sure. I guess Which, we'll accept yeah. that. Sure. Why not? We get another weirdly, uh, aggressively nice guy thing here where he says, Bella never wore makeup, nor should she. <laughs> Which is just, it's I, it's the sort of like, you know, reverse compliment that's like just a little too, you're protesting too much type of thing. Like, just back down, man. Like, <laughs> you know, just, you're beautiful. There you go. That's all you need to say. I, no- I noted that because I think I said that once early in my relationship with my now wife bridget i think i said it about a previous girlfriend uh-huh. <laughs> just not not a, not a good that she anymore. never had to wear makeup yes i or someone made note of, and she said something like you know oh, every guy says that about some girlfriend he's had and everyone wears yeah, makeup. Right. <laughs> don't don't be an idiot yes. <laughs> i was like oh okay sorry man right you were uh, yeah it's not uh it's not true <laughs> um and then we get into some more talk about the uh, the relationship between his siblings and stuff. Um, he describes the relationship between Emmett and Rosalie, which struck me as an extremely healthy basis for a relationship. In the first second that Emmett saw Rosalie, he saw a goddess whom he had worshipped without cease ever since. <laughs> so we, you just got to keep that in mind as they... Uh, we, we do learn more about the relationship throughout uh, this section and... Uh, just the the goddess worshiping is is an important facet of that. Oh, uh, and what is the other relationship? Sorry, I'm looking. Jasper and Alice here. Yeah, what was theirs was a little different, right? Yeah, I didn't write in. Oh yeah, okay, here it is. Yeah, okay. So Rosalie and Emmett are the cl- uh, the cliche classic love at first sight. Alice and Jasper's had been even less normal. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alice had known she would love Jasper. She'd seen years, decades, centuries of their future lives together. Okay, so that's it. Right. Does that work? Like you see into the future and go, well, I'm going to love him, so I guess I better just love him. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> and then I'm just with him. Well, that's, Is that how that's future scenes curse, I works? guess, yeah. That's why she knows she's going to be friends with Bella. Right. I guess that is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you learn about Carlisle and Esme's relationship, which like he he found her when she was like eight or something. Uh, believe it or not, it also is <laughs> weird and strangely underaged. Life had not been kind to Esme, and so it was not surprising that this golden memory of a good man had never been supplanted in her heart. So I guess she saw him, but it wasn't it wasn't untoward with Carlisle, right? Uh, she she hooked up with him later. I, that's what I'm saying. I guess so. It still is an odd thing of being like, yeah, but you know, you saw her and she was six, so like, like let's. Let's not make, let's just stop talking about these weirdos. It's, it's really, really something she didn't think out very well uh, when how this would come off to her reading audience. I will say this. This is a true story. This is a, a distant by marriage relative who was uh, raised in Singapore mm-hmm. that uh, one of their relatives said, uh, you have to meet your new wife and took them to the playground. <laughs> Now it was not; they were not married at that point, but it was an arranged marriage. Wow! I mean, this is this is not uncommon. It's just I've never met anyone, and so that was the, that was their story. And then they had a, a a long and loving marriage, but it was just that was the first time. When did you meet your wife? Oh, when my 
in-laws told me that you're going to marry that girl <laughs> and took him to the playground. <laughs> was he a laugh, boy too? Saying. Was he all like also on the playground or was he? He was, he was older. Okay. He was beyond. But I don't know age. by how much. <laughs> yes. But he did not get to see her or anything. Just be clear. It was just like, this is going to happen oh, at some okay. point. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, maybe say, uh, uh, we met at a, a bar. There we go. You're watching, yeah, you're watching just, a football just game. Just <laughs> right. And you weren't allowed in yep, there if you I, were our, six, that's for sure. I was walking my Dalmatian. She was walking her, uh, you know, poodle. The leashes entwined and our eyes met. Leash entwined with the that's stroller she was pushing. And that's where my wife was sitting. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, yeah, we, I get one more, uh, a, a super perceptive moment from the, uh, uh, white skin, sparkly 120 year old. You don't seem much like a junior in high school yourself. She said, pulling me from my reverie. Mm-hmm. I frowned for everything I perceived about her. She perceived too much in return. I changed the subject. Like you, as per our players, which was totally yeah. worth every cent, every penny. Every yep, thousand jer- dollars yep. that we Agreed paid for that. On the, yep. um, this is not something that is hard to perceive. <laughs> <laughs> he says it again and again, like how weird they are and right. how everyone avoids them and has rumors about them. They just thought, and yeah, so his he, dad was performing surgery on them in his spare time. So you can't count it as perceptive when someone goes like, you don't seem <laughs> <laughs> like a junior in high school, right? Right, yeah. That would be like uh, someone saying that to Michael Jackson. Like, you seem like an odd guy. <laughs> what, who, me? <laughs> no, come on. Now come on down to Neverland. That's where you're going to meet your uh, future wife. Yeah, to bring him up again has Norm's classic line. The more I read about this Hitler character, the less I like him. <laughs> it's not, You don't have to be very perceptive. Right. And then, yep, so after that, there was a red flag that I looked at and couldn't make heads or tails of after a a dozen times looking at him. So I don't know what Bella would have perceived by this. Uh, She says something about, like, and your brother and sister? And he says, my brother and sister, and Jasper and Rosalie, for that matter, are going to be quite upset if they have to stand in the rain waiting for me. Are they not his brother and sister, too? Like, what the hell is she talking about? I. That's a good question. I my don't brothers know. and sisters, my siblings. Like, why does he differentiate between? Is there some sort of? Is that part of the lie? Is that some of them are adopted or married? I. I it's not worth examining, well, but it confused me. Yeah. Well, remember he's doing. He talks about it a lot, where he keeps slipping up with her, and I think it happens again, where he makes uh, when they go to Port Angeles or whatever. Mm-hmm. He says like, "Wow, I made another mistake." And it seems to be he is, like I said, completely undone by this person. <laughs> He's doing the things, you know, like the, uh, uh, I brought it up before, the alien in this island Earth is like, uh, you know, Mozart is playing and he goes, oh, your composer Mozart is quite interesting. <laughs> and every hu- and he's supposed to be human and every everybody goes, our composer, he belongs to the world. It's like, how, oh, damn it. You know, slap right. your giant forehead and go, God, I, how, how did I slip up again? <laughs> you had a lot of time to plan this. What are you right. doing? Yeah. So this is just part of it. He just like goes, uh, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't know what to do when he's around her. Yeah, well, it's that, uh, it's that translucent skin like a uh, naked mole rat. So you know, who can blame him? Yeah, it's like one of those, uh, have you ever seen those, mushrooms that sprout up overnight but it's like a it's a ooze it sort of com- <laughs> have you seen that i don't think so uh we used to get them in our if you like have thick mulch or something and then it rains it can like this spore opens up and it just oh yeah out. okay yeah, yeah yeah and it sort of has a skin around it and it's when you first see it you're like this is obviously an alien that's what i picture her body as <laughs> great it's just like Lovely. a sack of fungi that has grown <laughs> out of the ground um, a friend added me to a, a Facebook group for like slime mold enthusiasts or something. And it was the, <laughs> it was the fastest that I've ever muted a, a, a group that I had accepted the entrance to. Just added you to it. Yeah. She added me to that and a frog meme. Uh, it was just like, okay, what do we do? <laughs> That's uh, something you got to ask in person. You can't, uh, yeah, yeah, can't do that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so this sort of chapter ends with him sort of demanding uh, convincing her to uh, let her drive him, let him drive 
her home, and then Alice will drive her car back home later. It's a very convoluted method of getting home, but he sort of does the, uh, you, you, you can't drive yourself, you're too weak from passing out of the sight of your own blood type of thing. And she goes along with it. Sure. You know, Why not? It's a, na- a normal thing. Like I've said uh, all of two dozen words to you. I've also been really rude to you. So let my uh, weird sister drive your car home. Yeah. And when you are, are in my presence, I look like I want to vomit all over. And <laughs> so sure. Yeah. Sounds good. Right. Uh, and that, that was the end of that chapter for me. That's all I got. Yeah. Nice. Well, I think uh, as we, before we move on to chapter seven, Melody, we can uh, do some of this long away. Oh, these are fanfics or potentially real experts, real excerpts from uh, later in the book. Uh, Midnight Sun. So the could be all fanfic, or they could be all real, or it could be a combination of the two. And like I said earlier, some of them are written by our loyal listeners. Some of them were discovered and submitted by our loyal listeners, many of whom are Patreon supporters, uh, which you can join over at patreon.com slash 372 pages. And uh, we appreciate everyone who chips in a little money to uh, keep the podcast going. Make it worth our while. We try to make it worth your while, too, with early access to everything and bonus stuff over there. It is quite a bit of fun. But I will say, I'm going to slip that as an excuse in my back pocket that people are going to other people's fanfic. I'm going to see how it goes. If I score five for five, then I will say thank you and I rule everything, but uh, if it goes Wait, the other way, things I mean, go What could it possibly do? You're thinking that they might these fanfic writers might be better? Is that what you're saying? Well, yes, of course. If you wow. have to go to someone else to pull out the fanfic, then maybe wow. you are. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Well, here we go. Let's start with number one. This was the essence of a vampire's desire, laid bare before my very eyes. I blinked and shook my head, but the monster was screaming in my ears now. Feed! My whole world turned red. I knew this was it. This was my last chance to stop my monster. To stop myself. I spun around and lurched blindly for the door, shoving aside the shoulder and the tray of instruments that were in my way. I flew out of the room, barely hearing the crash of metal against tile as I burst out into the hallway. But the hallway was filled with humans too, their pulses thudding in my ears as the monster shouted his rage at my betrayal. Wow. What was the first, uh, the first line from it? Up until, this was the uh, essence of a vampire's desire, laid bare before my very eyes. And then he yells, feed. Oh, I blinked and shook my head, but the monster was screaming in my ears now, all caps, feed. Golden Corral's new slogan, of course. <laughs> um, I think that that is, uh, I, th- I think it's fanfic. Okay. Let's do number two. Trying to subdue the beast within, I rummaged through the CD stash <laughs> in my car, searching for Debus- Debusset. Uh, you can say Debussy or you can Debussy. say Debussy. I'll say Debussy. It reminds me of Gary. I rummaged right. through the CD stash in my car, searching for Debussy. Then I remembered I had given it to Bella. The way those morons had attacked her with their cruel words made me sick and angry all over again. I distracted myself by hunting for another favorite, Vivaldi. I shoved it in the deck and skipped to my favorite track. I leaned my head back and tried to relax, but I was still in a high school parking lot. I couldn't seem to shut out the thoughts of every other student around me. Their inner monologue bounced across the lot to my direction. I can't believe I got an F. Why doesn't he like me? I need a new jacket. I sighed. Just shut up, I thought. (laughs) Well, I think it's fanfic because the choice of, I think someone's doing a subtle dig of of saying like, oh, you you know Debussy? Oh, you know Vivaldi? Literally... (laughs) The most class, that the most every famous classical composer. Two out of three weddings uh, feature Vivaldi, right? Like yes. Um, uh, at least the Mister did. There were a few that not even I knew, but uh, uh, I'm going to say fanfic. Okay. Here is number three. You know, I've never had much patience with Romeo. I teased. I knew she loved Romeo. What's wrong with Romeo? She asked, offended. I fought back a smile. My attempts at keeping her distracted were working beautifully. Well, first of all, he's in love with this Rosalind. Don't you think that makes him seem a little fickle? And then a few minutes after their wedding, he kills Juliet's cousin. That's not very brilliant. Mistake after mistake. Could he, could he have destroyed his own happiness any more thoroughly? She sighed in frustration. Do you want me to watch this alone? No, I'll be mostly watching you anyway, I said as I trailed my fingers idly across her arm. Hmm. 
Ah, they're getting tough. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm, wow, should I guess that this is fanfic pulled off of the web? <laughs> wow, gonna, you're gonna specify. I'm gonna, yep, I'm gonna specify. I'm calling my shot. Yes, wow, fanfic right. pulled off the web. Number four. Like I said, it's ostentatious. We try to blend in. Of course, Bella was totally oblivious to the inherent contradiction of my own car. It was no accident we were most often seen in the Volvo, a car celebrated above all for its safety. Safety, the one thing vampires would never need from a vehicle. Few would recognize the less common racing edition, not to mention the aftermarket work we'd done. You don't succeed, she told me, and then she laughed a carefree laugh. The blithe, wholly untroubled sound of her laughter warmed my hollow chest. <laughs> well, hmm. That's a tough one because um, we learned that, uh, is it Rosalie? Uh-huh. Rosalie likes to boost engines, so... <laughs> um, <laughs> Didn't see that coming because she was so hot, did you? So maybe the mention of the cars is either a subtle hook to my mouth or I'm going to say that's real. Wow. I took, I took the bait. All right. Number five, final one. My cold heart sank. Don't worry, teased Alice, folding the corners of her mouth into a wry smile. I'm sure you'll find a way to make it up to her. You always do, she wordlessly added. I shook my head. Bella trusted me, I insisted through my teeth. She had every reason not to, but she did. I know I'll never deserve that trust, but I would rather live a thousand wretched eternities without her than to think I defied that trust. Alice reached out to hold my trembling, icy hand, a look of both pity and sorrow seeming to spread across her face. You haven't, she sent. Bella knows your heart better even than I, and she sees that it's with her above anything else. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you my thought pattern here. Uh, The folding of the mouth, I think, Uh has been used before. Not that she wouldn't do it again. But I'm going to say that that was a thing that stuck out in a fan fiction writer's mind, and so they wow. put it in there. I'm going to say fanfic. I know okay, it's a risky, yeah. a risky uh, guess uh, for all five of them. Wow. All right. Well, here we go. So you believed this was going to be uh, invalid, so I think we're going to hold it to that because uh, <laughs> number one. Uh, this was the uh, the monster saying, feed, Golden Corral's new slogan. Uh, you said fanfic. That was indeed fanfic. That was submitted by okay. Janelle, but it was taken off of uh, a fanfic website. It's from Jessica 314's Tale of Years 1950 fanfic. Oh, so, wait. Tale of Years 1950? Uh, I don't know what that means. It's just the title. So they pull out certain years of, of his life and just do... Yeah, that's from uh, Chapter 6, Descent. Wow. So there's just, there's so many branches of fanfic. Yeah, and that was published uh, just uh, last week. So there we go. All right. Uh, so one for one. Number two. Uh, number two was uh, Vivaldi. You said fanfic. Yes. That was fanfic submitted by yes. IJC. Um, <laughs> so two for two. Number three. Uh, this was uh, Romeo and Juliet talking about the, the movie she's watching, I guess. Uh, mm-hmm. You predicted fanfic from the web. That was Fanfic from the Web. That was from the fanfic <laughs> Darkest Nights by Lyd Cullen. Uh, probably not his real name, I'm guessing. Oh, I've got my Dixon Ticonderoga in my hand, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so three for three. Uh, number four, this was the, uh, the Volvo, a car celebrated above all for its safety. <laughs> You said real, yes. and uh, you are correct. That was real. Yes. You get Woo. that, uh, that uh, just phrase that rolls off the tongue later in the book. Um, <laughs> and then finally, the last one was her face folding the corners of her mouth into a wry smile, uh, holding his hand. You said fanfic for that. That was fanfic written by Jay, five for five. This is yes. the first right. time in a long time we can play your your. Champion's theme song, Queen, will echo down as you clutch your pencil. Well done. I was going to say, the, the, we don't have the soundboard queued up? Come on, mm-hmm. man. <laughs> let's, we got to turn this into a morning uh, morning zoo DJ thing here. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. You heard my thought pattern, though, so you can kind of, you know, I, th- I think that that impresses people more, that I was able to show them the way to my striking, striking victory. I think that impresses people more, he says. That's... Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see if people were impressed by that. That's, uh, wow. That's, but that's uh, going to up that percentage of yours, that's for sure. 
I was just playing uh, yesterday to uh, people who had never done the game of like, what is the song that you would play to annoy everyone and clear a room? Mm-hmm. You know, presumably a well-known song. Okay. And I and I put on Shania Twain's That Don't Impress Me Much. <laughs> <laughs> everyone had to agree, like, you need to shut that off immediately. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, what, did you oh. go follow up with services selling or <laughs> not well-known? Didn't enough? go to any deep cuts. Tried to right. stay. Uh, I did do uh, Toby Keith's She's a Hottie, which is uh, a good, if you haven't heard that, that's uh, that's a good one. First thing I'm going to do as soon as we finish this two-hour discussion of Twilight is listen to some Toby Keith. I already see you have the note there to listen to all of uh, WC, and then you have to listen to all of Vivaldi. So this is going to be a long day for you. <laughs> uh, so let's keep on moving. Well done, everyone who submitted fanfic. Uh, I'd say write your own or uh, find some on the internet and uh, send them our way. Thanks so much. All right, so chapter seven is Melody, and this is uh, referring to the melody that Edward, the piano prodigy, will play as he... Uh, Talks through his romantic struggles with his family. Who um, thinks yeah, he's going crazy, lot, pretty much. A lot of Mr. Crossover here, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Com- We've got, uh, composer with a uh, young girl. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he, he sort of goes home and is... Uh, we just get a little more glimpse of his family life, and I guess this is the stuff that if you uh, only knew Twilight, you'd probably be very excited about because you would have never seen these things because Bella was not uh, peeping through the window and sitting in a rocking chair uh, observing him uh, after hours. No, indeed. But I I did get to issue my—I did not call in advance and get your approval on it, but I'm going to issue it anyway. Uh, full and firm settle down. Oh, please. This is this makes up for the uh, the embezzlement earlier. Embezzlement, spending company funds. We have different <laughs> terms for it. What if it had been Bella imagining me with my arms wrapped around her fragile body, feeling me pull her tightly against my chest and then cupping my hand under her chin, brushing the heavy curtain of her hair back from her blushing face, tracing the shape of her full lips with my fingertips, leaning my face closer to hers where I could feel the heat of her breath on my mouth, moving closer still. Set, settle settle down. down. Yeah, that's that's a big settle down. That's a Come huge on, one. Yeah, you're 120. Been... You're 120 years old. Yeah, you're in her bedroom thinking those thoughts too. So yeah, settle yes. down. You're going to get us settle. all into trouble here. Yes. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so he shows up, and that's he's he's obviously very flustered uh, from having uh, you know rode in the car with her, and her scent wafting the whole way, and his family, of course, picks up on this, but. Uh, like Emmett and Jasper are playing some custom version of chess, but I was more intrigued by uh, Rosalie, who sprawled sullenly on the sofa and started flipping through twenty channels a second on the flat screen, never pausing. So I was just—I didn't know if like, this was a vampire power, because like, think about flipping a TV channel. Like, there's always like, even if you can press the button twenty times a second, clearly there's like some lag in the you know, cable box going to the next thing. So does her vampire power allow her to, like, uh, override the firmware of the direct TV tuner? I like, guess so. Yeah. But that, I mean, that lag, I mean, Ernest Klein would not approve That's, of any oh kind of God. lag. She's got to move to yeah. Ohio. This is, yeah. Exactly. It's... Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, uh, that didn't strike me as a thing that is very impressive. You know, it, it struck me as like a, you know, you hear the Seinfeld theme and like, but a guy can go through the channels like he's a goddamn right. vampire. You know? <laughs> click, 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 click. And the woman's like, slow down. I don't have that power. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so Ro- as you uh, indicated before, she's a uh, a grease monkey, even though she's, you know, this this gorgeous god goddess that Emmett um and it worships. So uh, she storms out of the room, back ramrod straight. She continued to the garage and then squirmed under her car as if she could bury herself there. So that's her uh, her way of dealing with uh, frustration as she goes and takes it out on her custom hot rods. The frustration of him, just like whatever his plan is, right? They're just all sort of vaguely frustrated with him. I mean, it's obvious you should be, I mean, you know, human or monster. You should right. be ashamed of him. Yeah, they're they're but, he's gearing up to make them all move again or or worse type of thing. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, and but the, the, you know the, the no matter how many family meetings they have in front of the uh in front of the window at the uh, <laughs> huge table uh, with no food on it. The foodless table. Yes. Uh but, um, but like, help me with the, help me with the math here 
Okay. So the Great War had raged through most of my adolescence. This is obviously Edward. And mm-hmm. I'd been only nine months away from my 18th birthday when the influenza had struck. Okay. So that's... Is that what's, your, what's your understanding? 1918? Yes. But it, it was also the influenza had struck earlier. The worst years of it were... So I, 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 I guess I'll just have to grant leeway and say, <laughs> okay... That's when it was the worst, but it was kind of spread during the Great War. So anyway, well, I, I mean, at look, this point, I'll let so others decide whether or not that was uh, correct. The math when, when he can't remember things about like, uh, well, what do these humans eat? It's like you were human yeah. for eighteen years, man. Like maybe his, his your, your mind is not as sharp as the rest of you over these past uh, century. Uh, so all of his family's doing this stuff. Can you explain to me what? Uh, sorry, I'm picking it up. Emmett is doing? He's playing chess with uh, Jasper, right? But Jasper's kind of cheating. Oh, okay. I guess maybe I had skipped down to uh, the bear, Emmett and the oh, bear. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. They they go out after this. Like, he plays the piano, and his mom is really sort of impressed by that and says that there's he's playing a lullaby or something. But uh, uh, then they then he goes bear hunting with Emmett. Okay. And and so I, I was reminded of this, like, I think this came up, like, in the third movie or something. In the in the movies, Emmett is sort of like a big, uh, uh, you know, linebacker kind of dumbass with a flat top. And uh, it's revealed in the third movie that he was he was made into a vampire after he was mauled by a bear. <laughs> and that was the only oh, okay. way that Carlisle could save him. So now they're out there uh, um, hunting hunting bears, and Emmett is sort of, like, referencing that as he's, uh, as he's oh. taking one down. Oh, Okay, I didn't understand. The, it seemed like I should obviously know what this is. I had forgotten that he was involved. By... <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, that's just sort of a, a callback, I guess. But uh, okay. Yeah, while they're out there hunting, he said, Emmett says, uh, "Wonder what that human girl does to keep you out." Emmett mused. Maybe she should give. She could give me some pointers. And then Edward says, "My good humor vanished. Stay away from her." I growled through my teeth. Uh, so just imagine. This uh, this bag of chuckles all of a sudden is good humor vanishing, and this is this is not something you want to see. I mean, he, he's, no, he's nothing been, but he's been nothing but a laugh riot up till this point. So, yeah, yeah, snapping fingers. He's got one of those like uh, squirty flower boutonnieres. But uh, man, when that good humor vanishes, it's quite a turn. He becomes sort of quiet and stone faced and rage uh thinking about breaking mike newton's arms etc yeah i mean you know like all great comedians right there's always a real dark side to him it's, you know <laughs> it's it's the comedy is his release otherwise he'd be in therapy all the time so yeah it, uh-huh. it, it makes sense yeah yeah maybe, maybe now he's just going ha 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 john candy <laughs> that's that's when the good humor has vanished as opposed to the ah. Uh, but lots of uh, em- Emmett's booming laugh. Uh, Emmett laughed his booming laugh. I wish they were stronger. It would be more fun. Uh, no one said you had to fight your food. Yeah, but who else am I going to fight with? Uh, Emmett grinned at me, shifting his weight a bit. Uh, come on, Edward. And it's just a lot of laughing and grinning. I mean, this is a good time. He <laughs> yeah. waited for me to laugh at his joke and then made a face. So, yeah, it's, it's just I ignored his joke again. Wow, I mean, man! I wish these guys are cut ups. Yeah, it's there's broing down out in the woods. I mean, you know, yeah. more more good humor than an ice cream truck. I just slammed into my microphone. Please ignore that, everyone. <laughs> uh, I like this one too. Uh, Emmett references his death. I wasn't much match for a bear that first time around, was I? Bears, I muttered, adding a new fear to the already large pile. That would be just her luck, wouldn't it? Stray bear in town. Of course, it would head straight for Bella. It's like is are are there uh are there any bears that aren't stray bears like unless it's someone's like escaped pet bear like there's is that just to me as a very odd way to refer to a bear being around yes uh, a bear downtown is always a stray bear i think i don't know <laughs> yes but uh, let a, me yeah, read that russian the, circus or something yes you uh you ignored the reaction to it and so let me just read the last uh, sentence and see what your rea- guess what emmett Emmett's reaction would be when I say this. Okay. Stray bear in town. Of course it would head straight for Bella. Uh, uh, what, em- why are you, why are you thinking about her, man? Like what's, what's wrong with you? Emmett said, no, I'll give you his reaction. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, Emmett, Emmett, Emmett chuckled. Okay. All right. So, that was my next guess. That's, yes. Huh. <laughs> 
<laughs> so wow. still having a, they're having a great time. A yeah. Great time. Um, they, they, you get this detail too. Uh, so Emmett you know, and Rosalie, they worship each other like goddesses, but it says, uh, Emmett's thinking, can you even touch her? I mean, if you love her, wouldn't you want to well touch her? And Edward goes, Emmett and Rosalie shared an intensely physical love. He had a hard time understanding how one could love without that aspect. So that's just some normal uh, sibling stuff to to be aware of. Like, you know, and once again, no more details than uh, yeah. that surface stuff. That would, of course, cause a, hey, 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 oh, come on, man. Right. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> um, I will give you... Um, uh, I'll give you another quiz, and I hope mm-hmm. you have learned from the last time. All right, here is uh, Edward talking to Emmett. I want uh, what is Emmett's reaction? Honestly, she seems like more work than any. Pr- oh, sorry, this is uh, no, yeah, this is him. Honestly, she seems like more work than any pretty face is worth. And Emmett's reaction is <laughs> yes. All right, <laughs> you're learning. <laughs> <laughs> wow yes it is it's a uh it's a pregame show that's incredible he uh a couple sentences later he uh laughs humorlessly so he's trying to stay in the game i, I appreciated the games you know they're like you know stay with it man yeah <laughs> john candy <laughs> right well, you know, he's if Emmett is, he doesn't want to bring down the vibe, even if it's a, uh, even if his heart's not in it. So, I mean, they they go out to the woods and kill bears and chuckle. That's been their deal for a couple of years now, and he's he he wants to keep it up. So right now is like the the bear who's you know got one leg and his liver is dragging behind him. Is he like crawling slowly away as Emmett's like over you know over his shoulder, going? She doesn't seem like she's worth it, dude. <laughs> and the bear's like <laughs> slurps up one of its kidneys. Yeah. <laughs> Weird scene setting, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Well, they leave the woods then, and I think he then like heads right back to her house. He's so worried about a stray bear attacking her that he, he goes to her window again. Yeah. And this was a moment that was uh, just, it, it's sort of like when you realize you're you're in too deep, I think. It says, Bella was sleeping peacefully when I climbed up to her bedroom window <laughs> early Monday morning. I brought oil to grease the mechanism. So this is, you know, this is not like... Uh, I remember a friend talking about like uh, being at uh, Splash Mountain in Disney World and like, you know, they like smoked a joint on it and then like almost immediately the ride stopped. And so there are, of course, you know, paranoid things there in high mm-hmm. school or something. But he was like, you know, trying to imagine telling his parents, yeah, we got you know, thrown out of Disney World for smoking a joint on Splash Mountain. But no, that was our first time we've ever done anything like that. Like right. this is a advanced maneuver here to go get oil so you can grease the squeaky window from the last time you crawled in the window. It's a uh, <laughs> an officer's yeah. not going to believe you were just like, oh, I happen to be here. So what's that in your pocket, son? Oh, <laughs> But I, I, so you'll just have to trust me, listeners, that this is the note that I wrote for that. Edward bringing a can of three-in-one oil to grease the window skids is one of my favorite things in the Twilight universe. <laughs> <laughs> that one, I actually, I did laugh out loud and kind of slapped the table on that one. Yeah, wow. that was that was delightful. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, like, where are you going to stop if that's the thing? He's going to be like, you know, I noticed that the rocking chair was a little... Uh, he did some wood glue, so I, he's doing all sorts of projects now and her DIY stuff as she sleeps. He's uh, he's basically uh, uh, is it Dwayne from the office? Who's the the, the nerdy? No, what's his Dwight? Name? Uh, Dwight, who goes to houses and like checks out the structure of their roof and chimney and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you don't you don't need to be doing minor repairs. We we got it covered. Don't worry about it. Right, that. but in the uh, this it's that, but in the uh, service of. Curving out on someone yes, while they sleep. Yes, of so course. It's even better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. He. I wonder which uh, forum on the dark web he goes to get that advice. Like, right? Yeah. Got a squeaky window? Here's a quick tip: <laughs> bring a small can of three in one oil. <laughs> uh, but then she gets to just we're talking in her sleep, and so again, I just want more details here. It says uh, she's talking about her mom. I guess whatever Bella's mother was doing in her dream, it clearly worried her. She rolled suddenly to her other side, but her eyelids never flickered. Yes, yes, she muttered, and then sighed. Ugh, it's too green. So, like, I don't know, sure, is her mom making, like, a, a Kermit the Frog rig costume or something, and it, it, the color came out wrong or something? Like, whoa, I, maybe there's some sort of, like, explanation in the first book, but what's what's too green that she's dreaming about? But I have I, no idea. That was might have been a memory. Did I create this memory? 
and I'll be, I, I don't care if I do either way, but is her mom a, an amateur painter in the, in the movie? <laughs> Oh man, I don't remember. Is that a thing that like she comes in and she's you know in the you know the the paint uh, the large paint thing and she's got the uh, the easel and the, I think that might be a thing. Okay. So maybe maybe that that's what I put in my mind and I could be completely making that up, which would be so. It's just fantastic. Her, her erotic fan art painting of Kermit the Frog was too green then. So well, it was that's it what, wasn't your actually it was only one part of Kermit that she was. Got it. Yes. Actually, yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, it could have been any frog, actually. Uh, yeah, that's all I got for that. Yeah, he follows oh, wait, her uh, scent outside. Go, yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I, I just have the the jokes again. Okay, um, sure. Don't so, want to miss those. Yeah, track the jokes. Sorry, I know you're going through a tough spot. I really am trying to not be too much of an insensitive jerk, but since that's sort of my natural state. He waited for me to laugh at his joke and then made a face. So serious all the time. What's bugging you? Thinking about her? Well, worrying, really. What's there to worry about? You are here. He laughed loudly. I ignored his joke again. <laughs> so I just want to, I'm just tracking the jokes. So yeah, there you go. it's good. It's good. It's a, you've got a tight five already, I'd say. Pause for laughs. All right. Now we can resume the podcast again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he ends up with like following her scent outside. The trail she'd left stopped abruptly in the middle of nowhere in particular. She'd gone just a few steps off the path into the ferns where she'd touched the trunk of a fallen tree, perhaps sat there. And then he wonders, why would Bella have come to sit here alone? She had been alone, no doubt about that, in the middle of this wet, murky forest. And it would just be amazing if, you know, he sees Bella, like, coming back with, like, a magazine tucked under her arm and a roll of toilet paper or something. Be like, yeah, like, the toilet was clogged. This is what I... What the hell are you doing here? Why do you have a can of three-in-one oil in your pocket, you weirdo? (laughs) What I'm doing is totally normal. I'm pulling a Becky. It's uh, Everybody does. (laughs) Yes, yes. Uh, Yeah, Uh, and that's it for Chapter 7 for me. uh, The only question I have, it's not a note, is um, I realized I didn't read close enough I, and we meet him in the next chapter, but Peter and Charlotte. Oh, that's yeah. The, uh-huh. That's how the chapter ends, but I don't remember what he said about them. I suddenly found myself wishing that Peter and Charlotte would make an extended stay. <laughs> that's just not a chapter end sentence that you get very often. Yeah, well, the, the earlier Peter. chapter. Yeah, early chapter ended with, Will you go to Seattle with me? I demanded. And now you have. Okay. But yeah, so that was my first note about chapter eight, Ghosts, which was. I did not see much of Jasper's guests for the two sunny days that they were in Forks. And so that that is Peter and Charlotte. And this subplot really pays huge dividends. I think we can agree um, oh, to spoil man. that so, in advance. But just to, to be clear, they were not mentioned before Peter and Charlotte? Uh, I mean, they were mentioned. I think Jasper was like, oh, by the way, Peter and Charlotte are coming. Oh, uh, okay. All right. And maybe that was like someone who turned him. It's just some Jasper backstory. I'm not sure. I'm sure they'll yeah, explain it does, that in the retelling from Jasper's later. eyes later. but. He uh, he moves sullenly around the house, like avoiding Peter and Charlotte, making it very uncomfortable. Anyway, that's in this chapter. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so he the, I guess the fact that the sun was out made it so he had to sort of lie low so she wouldn't see him sparkling. Um, but she, the first thing I have here is Mike Newton comes back. Oh yes, yep, and uh, and uh, he he notices that Bella's hair is. Uh, looks different in the sun and comments on it. And uh, but Bella lets him down pretty easy. Uh, says she can't go to the dance with him because she doesn't want to hurt Jessica's feelings. Um, and Jessica is the Anna Kendrick character. I forgot her last name. But then uh, we get Mike's reaction to that, which is like she says, "You should really go to the dance with Jessica." And Mike goes, "She's cute though, I guess. Decent body, bigger boobs than Bella's, a bird in the hand." He was off then. On to new fantasies that were just as vulgar as the ones about Bella. But now they were only <laughs> irritated rather than infuriated. So, yeah, he's, uh, you know, they're, they're 25 times a minute might be an understatement with Mike. Well, yeah, you have to remember, too, as you read these, that because um, uh, it comes up later, is that he obviously has the ability to switch on a dime into someone else's thoughts. But I'm just pointing out, he lingers in Mike Newton's thoughts long enough to hear all this lascivious stuff. So, right. yeah. So it's just that sort of like, wow, every time I come into this uh, adult bookstore, I see that guy kind yes. of a thing. You know? like, I am disgusted by this. Oh, boy. Yes. Let's see what horrible things he's thinking of next. Uh, he but says, yeah, I also, uh, 
he says earlier about Mike Newton, he says, I had to feel some little respect for Mike Newton. He had more courage than I'd given him credit for. But I, I'm just pointing out, he frequently fantasizes about crushing his skull, too. Right, sure. So it's just <laughs> respect. There's, yeah. there's a lot of different feelings going on about Newton. I just liked I, Mike didn't strike me as the kind of guy who would say the uh, use the, the adage, a bird in the hand. As he's thinking, uh, fantasizing about uh, someone's body with bigger boobs than Bella. It just struck me as maybe not something a 17-year-old would have at his disposal. His parents were 69 when they had him. They were uh, <laughs> they were from D- the Depression era. And they, <laughs> a bird in the hand, you know. Right. That's what we always say, these Newtons around here. <laughs> Somehow they're from the East. I, I don't know why. Yes, yeah, so of course. Yeah, they're from that Washington. I got that yeah. one as well. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Um, but so yeah, he's like laying low so he doesn't sparkle, but she says at lunch, I saw Bella glance time and time again toward the empty Cullen table and that thrilled me. Perhaps she missed me too. So I believe at this time he's missed like nine days of school since she showed up. He took off a whole week to go to Denali. Yeah. He's already taken these two days off. He took off another day when he was, uh, they were doing the blood testing so he wouldn't freak out. So like, again, if you're trying to lay low, <laughs> missing school all the time is a good way to draw attention to yourself. Oh man, yeah, no, it gets it gets absurd. Like, there's no why would anyone think <laughs> they do, they don't go to school? They're obviously in because in the movie, don't they? The uh, brothers and sisters are always like making out and stuff, and people are going, "Wow, they're a weird family." Yeah, so like, that's yeah. How also, they show family. up like one quarter of the time that school is in session. <laughs> so, yeah, I feel like in my like high school, it was like you know, ten unexcused absences, and you're like done, like you're repeating the grade type of thing. Yes, um, yeah. So they, he's on the verge of that now. He has been, Edward Cullen has been absent nine times. <laughs> Isn't that what uh, Principal the person Rooney? who, yeah, Principal Rooney who cannot be named anymore. Right, yes. <laughs> yes but he so. could be impressioned of because that's hilarious. People do yes. <laughs> great impressions of him. Uh, I will say that, um, so I'm now counting and I'm just looking on my one page here. I can see his throat flaming or choking or uh, burning with desire uh, six times. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> he he does it to kind of, because he wants to now or something. I, I, I don't really get the transition. Uh, it seems like he could probably use a Ricola cough drop if his throat is in Kippering, encountering that much. It's uh, flaming hardship. constantly. Yeah, yeah. It is like the ad, you know, for a Hall's mentholatum or something where the flames are coming out of his mouth. So, wow. but that begins to happen pretty much constantly now. Nice. Once you notice it, it's kind of like that, you know, the professor who has a vocal tick that you, once you notice it, you're like, damn it. Now right. I noticed it. Now I can't stop hearing that. Well, there's 220,000 words in this book. So throat's got to be some of them. All right. <laughs> uh, what uh, else but- you got? He goes back to her house and he he continues to sort of uh, just do things that make you think he's in too deep. Uh, he says he's he's up in a tree watching her read in her backyard. And he says, I wasn't technically even trespassing now. The base of this tree grew from the next lot over, let alone doing something more felonious. So, again, like have, have the guys on Reddit advised you that this is like, you know, what you need. It's like a sovereign citizen forum. It's like, <laughs> you know, no, yeah, no, no, this like, is the. When you're when you're crossing lines, I always wonder that. But you you must be aware that you just crossed another one. But I guess you know you have, yeah. <laughs> you have your justifications for each line, and you're like, well, look, if I did that, it's not that big of a deal that I crawl in a tree that technically isn't part of her land, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna do cocaine at the strip club on this Thursday night because my policy is only to do it on weekends. But I'm not going to work tomorrow, so that I mean that. Well, as far as I'm concerned, tomorrow this is a weekend, so yeah, I'm going to do it. Right, I'm 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 not uh, I'm not drinking during Lent, but Sundays technically aren't Lent, so uh, <laughs> I'm going to tie one off. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's a uh, that, that's his uh, justification scenario, which is endlessly amusing to me. But yeah, he watches her read uh, uh, Jane Austen and some other books too. I guess <gasps> does she like Jane Austen? Oh, yeah, my goodness. Believe it or not. <laughs> Probably might but, even have an appreciation for Shakespeare. I, I don't know. No, it's some, she's, she delves into these obscure authors. So who, who can say? But she uh, she sleep talks and says Edmund, I guess. And he thought she was talking about him. But then she sa- he says, ha, I guess he finds that amusing. She wasn't dreaming of me at all. 
The self-loathing returned in force. She was dreaming of fictional characters. Perhaps that had always been the case, and all along her dreams had been filled with Hugh Grant in a cravat. <laughs> Which is, you know, that's that's what 17-year-old girls in 2006 were always fantasizing about, I'm guessing. I assumed it was the film adaptation of uh, Lair of the White Worm, but uh, yeah. what, did I, what did I know? The, the, uh, the, the tangled web gets even more tangled. Uh, I... I just want to point this out. Another one of those, like, man, you had the opportunity and you let us down again. I went for the shortest of hunting trips, contenting myself with the smaller, gentler creatures that did not taste as good as the other predators, and then changed into fresh clothes before I ran back to Forks. <laughs> what What are those creatures? Why can't you just name them? Yeah, I mean... Smaller, gentler creatures that don't taste as good as the other predators. Please give me the list. Yeah, uh, Pomeranians, like... uh, This is an easy thing to do. I can't believe you're leaving this material out. (laughs) Toads? Is he just, like, going to town on a whole, like, pond of toads? Well, they're not predators, so is he talking about herbivores, then? I wouldn't say deer are smaller. Deer are about as big as an animal gets out there. Yeah. So I don't I don't know. <laughs> if anyone has if there's fanfic on that, there's got to be, right? Where they kind of drill it, yeah, down right, on that. Yeah, his his diet. I do love yeah. uh uh we we want it both ways. We 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 mock Dan Brown for saying the guy's uh, swigging uh uh olive oil and eating sardines out of the fridge and then she leaves out any specifics about food and we're like give us the needless specifics <laughs> uh, <laughs> we need- that, is, that is the privilege of having a podcast about <laughs> exactly <sh> terrible <laughs> books um yeah so i guess he hunts but then he returns home and that's where uh, I, my last note is about charlotte and peter oh yeah please go on i just have one more about the uh the uh, rosalie's uh a car overhaul. So oh, okay, go yeah, it just uh, it says, uh, "Charlotte, Peter." I said, nodding. It was nice to see you again, Edward. Charlotte said doubtfully. Peter just nodded in return, and there they go. Their mission fulfilled. Their uh, contribute contribution to the narrative complete. They go on their merry way. I, I did look. I believe Charlotte was mentioned maybe once later in the book, but they uh, they do not make a. Uh, <laughs> they, this introduction does not pay off. They are house guests who just kind of make it clear that uh, Edward is not himself. That is a pretty shallow uh, character to put in a book. Yeah, for something that like everyone else has been like pretty much said verbatim, "Hey, you don't seem like yourself today, man." And but they do make one other mention is that maybe just an introductory uh, as clumsy as it is, they say, "Hey, if you see uh, you know, uh Jenny Tell her I said hi. And he's like, yeah, I don't think so. She had turned, you know, she had turned oh, him yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. there's some, there's an intro there, but it's very, very clumsy. It's like. Yeah, there's some backstory. Off screen characters being mentioned by other characters who have no other. It's, uh, <laughs> it's very poor. But, yeah. Uh, I, uh, maybe that's a, you know, that's the excitement of seeing, um, you know, the Boba Fett in uh, the background of the bar in Star Wars or something, you can nudge someone else and be like, they brought up Jenny. Oh, my God. <laughs> You'll meet her later. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, just great characters. I'm glad we met them. And uh, that, that we get to meet another fantastic character in the next chapter, Port Angeles. But what was your thing about Rosalie? Oh, it's the end of the chapter, so it's very nice. It's like uh, the robust purr of the engine Rosalie had boosted for me last year when she was in a better mood was soothing. (laughs) So it's like when she's in a better mood, but wasn't she in a crappy mood when she dove into the car? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So maybe she was like putting uh, uh, sugar in his gas tank at that point if she's in a bad mood. So in a good (laughs) mood, she makes... She, she puts in turbochargers, yes, but in a bad mood, she dives into the car and like puts it slightly out of timing or something. Like, oh man, right. I shut it off and it like didn't shut off after for three seconds. It was pinging and everything. God, Rosalie, be in a better just, mood next time. Yeah, did, I wish you would just not traffic in these tired vampire cliches like this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Hot on. female vampires get in bad moods and then they go and soup up car engines. Exactly. <laughs> Um, I, I, and we, we didn't mention it earlier, but she was in the foul mood because, uh, Rosalie could never understand why Edward hadn't found her attractive. And now he finds Bella attractive and she doesn't think Bella's prettier than her. So again, that's just really standard, uh, 
brother sister stuff to be to be fussy about. Oh my god, I didn't even notice that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, she was like upset that uh let me see if I can find the actual thing. Um Well, you're doing can I ask did she bag on her terrible skin at all? The fact that it's just <laughs> inadequate to hold in the sack of gross fluids that pulse through her weak veins. I mean, if she had been thinking that, we would have definitely heard it, so I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> Here it is, though. It says, I thought that old resentment buried that she was long past it, and she had been. And until that day, I finally found someone whose beauty touched me the way hers had not. Of course, I shouldn't have realized how that would annoy her. Rosalie was mortally offended that I found some insignificant human girl more appealing than her. So, you know, just something to bring up at, you know, her her wedding toast someday. And then when my sister got upset because I didn't find her hot, I, you know, she stormed out to the car to put a uh, whistle tip on the muffler of our mustang and then that the table that they're all at breaks into uncontrollable laughter and like banging on the sides of their champagne glasses like (laughs) yes it's so true (laughs) all right so this wow chapter nine port angeles am i pronouncing that right is it angeles angeles i would say angeles but i have no idea Uh, okay i've been saying angeles in my head so okay I, i panicked there uh, this uh, so we've been comparing these chapters to novellas. Mm-hmm. Th- this one is like uh, Stephen King's The Stand or something. <laughs> I mean, this thing is just uh, that's what I felt like when reading it. It is so long. Yeah, it's a it's a, it's a lengthy. It probably is twenty thousand words all on its own. To describe a girl going to buy a dress with her friends and then having a, a having dinner, a, <laughs> having a pretty minor incident, and then yeah, it is amazing. But uh, let's dive in. Let's do it. Yeah. So I just so off the top, I had to look it up. Uh, Port Angeles is a town of nineteen thousand people, um, and it is like about halfway between Forks and Washington, on the coast, I guess. Hmm. So nineteen thousand is very tiny. So when you're but just that's imagining... the big one that they go to, or is it one of those like charming tourist towns that you? Go I think to? it's that. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, so that means you know the downtown is probably like maybe two blocks if it's that big. But uh, right. just worth keeping in mind when the uh, when the uh, one moment of drama actually occurs here. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> when the when the, uh, the 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 gang of people shows up. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, so she's uh, going to buy dresses for the dance. Uh, I'm unclear about whether the uh, Sadie Hawkins dance has already happened or if the prom is now something they're concerned about because Tyler Crowley seemed he was confident that she would take him to the prom but you know, she he didn't care about the sadie hawkins dance because prom was coming up soon so maybe they just have a dance a week in this town it was a weird yeah that was a confusing thing because you had the the tc dance the mm-hmm. uh and the, but yeah now prom is on their mind and <laughs> it, it, sorry the gc girls choice right is that yes what okay yeah, yeah yeah sure girls choice yeah yeah and not the sadie hawkins so you had to keep that in mind okay so this isn't the sadie hawkins because the guy's try to get the girls to ask them to go to the dance, which sort of <laughs> defeats the purpose, right? Right. But, but then, these guys uh, are but... not the brightest or coolest guys, so who knows? How dare you say that of Mike Newton? How dare Sorry. you, sir? So yeah. I just, uh, I'm just frustrated that I don't know his horrible fantasies. <laughs> he makes Kanye's My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasies look like uh, not dark, not twisted fantasies. Right, right. Edit that out. That's, uh, <laughs> it's, yep, we'll did, edit. Did, did that Let one through. It. Let me do a clap sync. All right, that's gone. Thank you. All right. Um, so, all right. So she goes with her friends, and now I don't recall that there was another friend in the movie. Are we? Are we allowed uh, to talk about the differences between this version of the book and the movie? We can. So there is a uh, third guy. There was a. Um, there was like a. a I don't know if he was in all the movies. He must have been. He there was like a Asian kid with long hair, and then there was sort of a nerdy nerdy girl with glasses that I think he was paired up with. Oh yes, yes. Do you remember yes. this? Now yeah. I remember. Yeah, she had like granny glasses on. Yep. Yes. Uh huh. So I, this okay. must be her uh, because otherwise, you know, I don't know who it would be. Um, right. But okay. yeah, so Jessica and Angela are the people that she's uh, traveling to Port Angeles with. And, and this uh, is the this launched the career of. 
Jessica, what's what's her name? The actress Anna Kendrick. Uh, Anna, Anna Kendrick. Yes. Yes, I believe so. I mean, she. Who knows? She could have been in some Disney Channel thing or something. But yeah, again, you you saw this person, and it's like, well, like no one's going to see this movie, so this is not going to affect us. And then I think by the time the fifth one came out, she was like in, you know, Oscar nominated movies and you know wildly successful franchises, but then still had to show up to, uh, you know, Breaking Dawn Part Two and like make eyes at Mike Newton. <laughs> Right. Yep. She had like, you know, 30 million Twitter followers, got paid for every tweet she did. Uh, yep. And then this poor dope who's like, hey, Arizona, how do you yes. like it? Like, shut up. God damn right. it. Just Yeah. Sorry. Uh, George Clooney is calling me. I've got to. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so so Edward is sort of reading their thoughts so he can keep tabs on them. Uh, he says, I was already tired of listening to Jessica. I searched close by for Angela. Ah, but Angela was in the process of changing dresses, and I skipped quickly out of her head to give her some privacy. So a, re- a real gentleman here. He's uh, he's he's retired his three-in-one oil. He's he's you know, <laughs> renounced those ways. I had, uh, again, you have to trust me, my note was, what a gallant act by the guy <laughs> creeping on the high, high school girls. <laughs> ah, I shall cover my eyes, milady. <laughs> yes. Uh, but then he drives around town because his son is still out and he can't get out of his car um, uh, So because people would notice him sparkling. So he just like drives around town looking for someone else thinking about Bella as if he's like trying to find an open Wi-Fi signal or something. Yeah, I, I kind of I actually admire the I mean, I don't I don't know if I admire it is the right word, but the yeah, limitation these words carefully. <laughs> yes, I know the, the limitation that he has, I find very comical. I'm trying to think of like another because he's the hero here. He's going to he's saving her from something. And we know that like I was worried about her. Mm. Did she scrape a knee? Did she, you know, stray uh, bear? Yeah, she walked past that uh, the hardware store where they hang bird feeders out and she wasn't looking and she hit her head on one of those uh, angular glass bird feeders. You know, he's like thinking of every possibility. And then when I went to help her, the hardware store guy came out and said, you're that guy. I sold that three in one oil too. How'd that mission go? <laughs> What did you say that was for again? <laughs> Dude, keep it down. Here's another 50. I got to keep one for the restaurant. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, so, but then his limitation is that he kind of has to, yeah, he has to drive around. And I'm trying to think of any other hero who has that that weird, very specific limitation. Right. Like, yeah, you know, look, I see a cloud. Is it going? For- oh, it slipped right past the sun. Damn it. <laughs> now I can't. I got to have to watch her being eaten by the stray bear. It's very. Right. It's, it's a weird limitation. But it's also gave me pause because essentially, all right. I'll just read this. But uh, he he reads some thoughts. Uh, it's aha. Here she comes. There at last was her face. Finally, someone had noticed her. The relief lasted only for a fraction of a second, and then I read more fully the thoughts of the man who was gloating over her face, where she hesitated in the shadows. So he's keeping his distance because the sun is still out but this guy and his his drunken buddies as her friends are sitting down to a dinner are are planning to do some sort of ho- horrible assault in in broad daylight in this town of 19,000 so like a four square block town yeah so you probably have the uh you have the restaurant that's you know barely making it but is coasting on its reputation it's like it's small it's in this old mansion but it's really yeah. good food the chef was brought in from seattle yeah they and got the, the best lobster it, bisque and it's clearly coming out of a big just plastic uh bucket of lobster bif- bisque from cisco yeah but they're coasting on their reputation that this is a historic old mansion and then next mm-hmm. to that is like the it's dress water shop. taffy shore yeah yeah, the dress shop owned by the, uh, 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 you know, this woman who uh, is a well-known institution in town. Like, oh, I always try to buy stuff from her. And so the mm-hmm. parking lot out back has 10 slots, right? Right. And that's where she is. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. and that's a, a bookstore there. Like, yeah. yeah, that's like a river walk area, too, where, the, you know, you can come up the back and have some coffee and buy the book. And so mm-hmm. that's. That's where these guys lurk, for the, <laughs> waiting yeah, to like attack a, a high school girl. There's one of those angel wing murals that you can pose in front of and, and tag right. it with the right thing. Um, but yeah, so and but but so yeah, they may not be the brightest uh, bulbs uh, in the drawer, but something about it delighted me entirely, and I'm just going to read, read it. Okay. Their minds around him were not the cesspool that his was. They were all slightly intoxicated, not one of them realizing how far. The man they called Lanny planned to go with this. 
They were blindly following Lanny's lead. He'd promise them a little fun. And I just wrote all caps, 10 exclamation marks, Lanny. It's just the uh, – we, we don't get many bad guys with in, intimidating names in the Twilight series. I think we're going to come across James later, the most sinister vampire. But Lanny is is definitely my favorite character. It uh, it reminded me of a memory. Now I have to ask you – we've never done this live, but I'm going to do it. What is our What is our legal obligation in a podcast? If we bring up someone's actual name, are we liable mm-hmm. for anything? Mm-hmm. I don't think and anyone. I, can I talked track. about Andrew's John Candy story early, so okay, yeah. Well, all right. I'll try to leave out a, a detail here. Okay. Uh, there there was a Lanny in my life. This is many years ago. No <laughs> one is ever going to know this, but I'm still going to be slightly circumspect. Okay. Who became a boss of mine, and his last name is is a German spelling of a word that, when you look at it, it sounds like you are just saying male genitalia. <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. But he did not pronounce it that way. But everyone who knew him, because he was Lanny, would pronounce his name like male genitalia. Wow! And infuriate him. Because he was just such a dweeb, but he was a boss to a bunch of people at this factory that I worked at. Am I, am I being circumspect enough? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I don't. And the I fact is, no one tracks. ever called him with gave him the respect of pronouncing his name correctly ever, and it <laughs> enraged him every time. So as soon as I saw that out of the back yeah. was Lanny, I, I, you know, your mind flashes to it like, yeah, oh, well, wow. that's so Lanny. Whoa, yeah. Like you mean, it didn't flash to uh... dude. With no uh, no respect from anyone who is uh, supposedly under him in terms of employment. <laughs> so anyway, that's my Lanny story. So it didn't flash to professional wrestler Lanny Poffo? Or, uh, I did not know Lanny Poffo. Please tell me of this person. I'm just looking up Lannies. These are the top four Lannies for auto oh, okay. Lan- Lanny McDonald, up. a Canadian ice hockey player. Lanny Lambert, I don't know who he is. And uh, pro golfer Lanny Watkins. Lanny Lambert... I've... uh he I was feel uh, like the I husband might... of different strokes star Dana Plato. Oh, we lost her, right? She's gone. Uh, Dana maybe? Plato? Yeah, I, I believe know. she passed away many years ago. Oh, sure. Yeah, 1999. Okay. R.I.P. Yeah. So anyway, Lanny, Lanny with the uh, <laughs> Lanny, Lanny Dong. Yep. The German name that sounds like genitalia. You can take your guesses at it. All right. Uh, but yeah, so she, he has this theory uh, that, like, essentially she attracts trouble. And he's noticed this by her being sort of clumsy. She stumbles and stuff. And then he expands that theory to be like, well, she stumbles and then she attracts psychopaths like Lanny who are going to, like, beat her to a pulp in an alley. So it seems sort of a little – I think he needs to work on it more because right now it seems a little too all-encompassing if that's uh, the kind of trouble she attacks, attracts. Trouble, quote. Yeah, and he, he immediately panics when he can't – like she's with her girlfriend shopping in again a charming little town mm-hmm. with the little with the old timey lift bridge that people find charming <laughs> whatever and uh and when she's gone for 2 minutes he goes oh god well this is it this is obviously the end right and i mean this attitude is not sustainable in any way correct yeah no it's <laughs> that a uh, the second like- you're out of my sight you are obviously going to you know, be surrounded by a group of people, and then she is. Yeah. No, so it's but, like if you could yeah. hear everyone in the world talk, it would drive you mad. And if you're just constantly, if you know, if you're obsessed to this degree with someone that you're worried, you no, know, whenever they're not in your sight, they're going to you know have all these maladies happen. It's you're you're going to go crazy. Yes, uh, but it it just doesn't make any sense. And he says at one point was earlier when she was sleeping, didn't he notice like some mark on her palm or something? Because mm-hmm. she'd gone to the beach and she'd probably slipped on the rocks. Yeah, she had a slight there, scratch. Yeah, there was like three paragraphs of like, yes, that was it. That like, you, man, this is not sustainable. <laughs> Listen to your brothers and sisters. <laughs> you have to stop this. This is right. not sustainable in any way. As seagulls plucked the brains that oozed out of her ear, like you know, I envisioned all these things happening, and she's like, yeah, I, I, I my elbow grazed a rock. Please, right. please back off. Please put the oil away. Um, uh, but so plot wise, she's surrounded by I don't have many more notes, but the plot is pretty good. So, I don't yeah, know he just uh, he pulls up in the car and essentially says, get in. Um, and she does. And 
then he spends the rest of the time pretty much like gripping the steering wheel. Um, surely she could feel the brutality rate radiating out of me. Surely that was much, that much was obvious. I would frighten her even more if I could not calm the lust for slaughter boiling inside me. And I said, yeah, that checks out. I think she might be frightened if your lust for slaughter boiled over. That would probably be frightening, I would guess. Uh, and it's uh, the the entire time he's doing this when he talks about like his rage and there's a very long thing here and we get a little bit of his past which we'll get to in a second but he uh what i was picturing of his rage because he talks about the burning in his nostrils and his throat again it's all over this thing is uh i'm sorry but it's a classic the bill o'reilly rage <laughs> remember when he has to like hunches his shoulders and breathes in through his nostrils yeah <laughs> when he's like to play us out or whatever. Like, what does that mean? What does that mean? And, and then, then the guy goes off mic, like, it, you know, just like play at the end of the show or whatever. He's like, <laughs> he does that deep breathing thing. That's what I picture him just sitting in the car doing just hundreds of Bill O'Reilly's. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. He takes off his jacket and throws it to the ground. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, that might uh, intimidate the uh, 17-year-old girl who doesn't understand how you even knew where she was in the first place. I I, I, I trust him on that one. Right, who uh, you know was only saved by him swerving his Volvo into the middle of a circle of guys, some of <laughs> who were more into uh, whatever was going to happen and some less. But uh, And then him throwing the door open and going, get in! And she like runs into the, she jumps into the car and slams it behind her and then just sits there. As this guy goes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so he's breathing out of his nose. Uh, she has no idea why he got her. And then they decide to go and uh, get dinner with her friends. <laughs> um, even though he's. Yeah, that's, that's what you do, right? After that. Yes. But he says that uh, they, they were supposed to meet her friends there. Uh, but Jessica and Angela were finished eating and both now truly worried about Bella. They were on their way to search for her, heading off along the dark street. And I just don't know how truly worried you can be for someone if you finish dinner, pay the check, you know, maybe get some mints off the hostess stand and, and then go out searching for her. Oh, man, this uh, tiramisu is delicious. Do you think she's dead or being killed out on the street? <laughs> <laughs> truly worried. Yeah. Uh, and again, like someone that they've met uh, two weeks ago, I think. So, you know, the, their true worry, probably not even that much uh, if it was a lifelong friend. And so... Is she so? He's a junior in high school, right? Yes. She's is she sophomore? I think this must be the same, just because they're in the same biology class. Oh, okay. All and right. they they can both drive, I guess. They can all drive. Yeah, but I mean, you could drive at sixteen. I'm assuming he's seventeen. Yeah. And she's sixteen. Okay, probably. Well, yeah, but I mean, that might be a you know, hey, um, hey, mom, I, we lost, <laughs> we drove here. How many miles did you say? Uh, to, it's like probably, Port Ange- yeah, it's 138 to Seattle, so it's probably like a two-hour drive to Port Angeles. And cell phones fully functioning at that point. This is not uh, an issue. Yes. So, yeah, that does seem like a long period of time to have a full meal at, <laughs> at a nice restaurant in like a charming town next to the dress store to right. uh, not be a little bit concerned. But They're uh, watching Lanny's Drunken Mob sort of parade around in front of them, like building up a full head of steam before they go to the uh, parking lot to... Those guys look really drunk and angry, but here, <laughs> try this. This is delicious. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he convinces, I guess, them to leave and let her take her home. And uh, that brings us to the first uh, Sonic challenge I had for you. Oh, I can't... I did not notice it. I rarely miss a Sonic challenge. So here right. you go for me. Uh, so he says to, uh, to go to, for Angela and Jessica to go home. Okay. Angela said quickly in a hurry to be out of the way, if that was what Bella wanted. And it seemed that she did want that. See you tomorrow, Bella dot, dot, dot Edward. She struggled to say my name in a casual tone. So see see you tomorrow, Bella Edward. And then, yeah, but you have to struggle to say Edward is in a casual tone. Okay. All right, so the first one is casual. The second so you, one I yeah. struggle to do. <laughs> okay, here we go. And I am Jessica? Yes. Oh, no, Angela, okay. sorry. Angela, Huge difference. Angela. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. All right. Let me, I, I got to rewrite my character Bible. And done. Okay. See you tomorrow, Bella. Uh, 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 
Edward? <laughs> that sounded like a real struggle. <laughs> I, was, I, I went with the struggle more. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if I landed the casualness, but I struggled. Yeah, you did. It was a big struggle. I think that the but the friends who uh, finished an entire dinner while one person was missing and being assaulted probably uh, didn't even notice that she was struggling with that uh, yes. with that endeavor. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, so before though he, that he gets to the restaurant, I do want to point out we get backstory on him and his vigilante days. Oh yeah, and this is good. And this is another detail. <laughs> like all you have to do is give us the detail. So he talks about uh, how he used to kill people who really deserved it. And mm-hmm. it's basically, at this point, it's like a take my word for it. These guys are the worst. You'd want them killed, too. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, this is, the, the, this is uh, the cast of the worst sitcom you've ever seen. Am I right? I mean, these guys deserve death. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so there's one guy, he says, who was the worst of all. It was the closest I ever came to crossing that line. Still... I killed him as quickly and efficiently as I killed all the rest. And it's like, just tell us who it is. Yeah. It's, who it's, is this guy? It really is like all you need in this book. The prequel, the adventures that happened beforehand. Like, <laughs> give us the good stuff, man. That and and even just Mike give Newton us a little, fantasies. you know, tick it down. Like, like I did, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, James or uh, 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 John Wilkes Booth, or you know, I, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like some yeah. Oh, really? You killed you killed John Wilkes Booth? That's amazing. <laughs> All right, that's yeah. okay. This 700 page journey was worth it. Now, but this guy who was known as the Boston Strangler, you know, whatever. <laughs> like, oh, right? Yeah, he right. killed the Boston Strangler. D. B. Cooper, who would never surface again, was. <laughs> He was just a, uh, uh, worked at a factory, and then didn't. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I missed I, that detail was sadly missing. Yeah, um, but yeah, so they go to the they go to the uh, restaurant because he's like, you know, she needs to get some something in her in her stomach. She needs to get some blood sugar uh, because you know he thinks that she might be in shock because of the landing assault. Um, but in the restaurant. Both the hostess and the waitress are uh, super into him, and they like try to sabotage him with a bad table so that his date will go poorly. But then he bribes her to get yep. a better table, and then uh, the hostess says uh, or thinks, uh, that, "Whoa, uh, your server will be right out. He can't be real. Maybe she'll disappear. Maybe I'll write my number on his plate with marinara." She wandered away, listing slightly to the side. So this was the hostess idea of how best to win over this, uh, you know, dark smoldering guy who's just entered the the restaurant. Yeah, I've uh, I, I worked at a restaurant. Did you? You worked at a restaurant. Yeah, right? I worked at a restaurant for like two months right after college. Um, you bust. Did you bust? Uh, I, no, I was a waiter. I had. Uh, I oh, had, you were a waiter. Had an opportunity to do. Uh, to do this hitting on thing, but uh, I never, I never went with the. I worked huh. at a Mexican restaurant, so it would have been, it would have been like nacho cheese on the side. Oh, or refried queso. beans. Yeah, I could probably spell. Yeah, uh, but uh, I, I'm glad I didn't ever try that sure. maneuver because I actually did some. Um, I went to hire the 372 players, but I, I noticed I thought it was a bank error um, type of thing when it said there was no money left in it. So oh, I, I'm sorry. I meant to email you on that. Yeah. Yeah. Just in the future going forward, it'd be sure. Sure. Just sure make things sure. easier. So I went, I spent like five hours on the dark web looking to see if anyone had, had, had sort of explored five hours. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and had explored the, this waitressing technique. Uh, it turns out it happens a lot, uh, but it's not really something that ever goes well. Oh, it never goes well. No, no, no. I mean, it sounds like it would in not re- go well. In recreations on the dark web. On the dark web, yes. Well. Yeah, but you yeah. have to imagine they're like simulations. They've they've crunched the numbers. They they know how this would play out in real life. Oh, like I did these, not know that about dark web reenactors, but now that well, you yeah. mention it, of course that has to be it, true because they want to get it as accurate as possible. Yeah, why would you be wasting your time doing this if it was just sort of some... some yeah, like slapdash lark. guess. Yeah. yeah, let's guess. Yeah. No. So yeah, this, is the, this is the one that I found that I felt was most sort of convincing as to how the experience probably would have gone if we had seen oh, it happen okay. in Midnight Sun. Got a penne vodka for the two top. What the hell's the microplane? These truffles aren't going to shave themselves. 86 of calamari. Hey, pastry chef, you got time to lean, you got time to clean. Um, excuse me, chef? If a table of Top Chef fans wants me to pose for a pic, tell them to piss off. We're slammed back here. Oh, no, no. Not yet, at least. Uh, I was just wondering if I could have a little marinara sauce. 
In what capacity is the person who stands at the front of the house and asks people if they have a reservation? Do you need marinara sauce? Why are you even back here? Who's mine in the store? Uh, a server asked me to help them out. Uh, they have uh, mega diarrhea. M- mega diarrhea? Well, that's concerning. Hey, Julie, get this one a ramekin of marinara. There you go. Oh, thanks. It doesn't come in like a squeezable pastry bag? Of course it doesn't. You slap it on a pasta sauce by the ladleful. Mushroom ravioli up! Oh, oh. You know what? Uh, Mega D had that table. I'll bring it out to them. I hope it isn't contagious. It sounds extremely unpleasant. Yeah. Let me just see here. Okay. All right. You can do this. Uh, 206-373-4905. Oh, oh God. Oh, oh God. It's very liquidy and spreading fast. Oh, the two's running into the zero. Four and nine merging. The five is indistinguishable from an ampersand. Are you going to bring that out to the table? Uh, uh, they, they wanted a side of Parmesan? Here you go. Now stay out of my way. Okay, okay. If I grate it just right, uh-huh, and then grind some fresh pepper to accent it, gah, the puddle of marinara absorbed it all immediately. Uh, but if I tear into the ravioli and strategically align the mushrooms... Oh, God! Oh, they are much more finely ground than I anticipated. I thought there might be longer slices of mushroom inside, but it's much closer to a paste, and now it's mixed in with the marinara puddle. But what if I place some cannoli on top? Nope, nope, heat immediately melted the filling, adding to the puddle. But I could pour grappa on top and then ignite it. Oh, God! Oh, inferno! Oh, oh. What are you still doing back here? What have you done to that plate? It, lo- it looks like someone mega, you know what it on it. Sir, sir, I am horny for a customer. And if you can think of a better way to let him know, I want to hear it. Horny for a customer? Well, that's a horse of a different color. Uh, yes? What? Well, you just said, that's a horse of a different color. And then you hit play on an old disc man hooked up to some Altec Lansing computer speakers. And then like six seconds of music played. Yeah, there's there's a gas leak in here. It causes a lot of erratic behavior. <laughs> and probably mega diarrhea. That too. Well, good luck with a hottie. I'm going to pass out now. Wow, yes, that's mm-hmm. yes, that strikes me as the most accurate take Very on accurate. that. And yeah. again, I can't know because I wasn't I, I have never been to one of these experiences, but sure. Yeah. <laughs> Has the ring of veritas about it as one of It does. It gravitas too. It was a sort of a you you understood the the humans behind those roles. Puny humans, yes. Those human <laughs> creatures. Yes, I got it. Uh, well, what else? As we approach the, uh, the, the world record mark for the length of one of these things, let's, uh, let's pick up the pace. Okay. I got a, just a couple more things. The blush count went up because her cheeks took on a faint pink glow. If you're tracking <laughs> the blush count, uh, bags on her are terribly inadequate skin. Again, the pretty blouse she wore looked too thin to protect her adequately. It clung to her like a second skin, almost as fragile as the first. So garbage skin. <laughs> Uh, and then a weird thing, she he says about his mind reading as he reveals that to her, he said, mind reading was, after all, not a facet of vampire canon. Yeah. So he himself calls it <laughs> <laughs> canon? <laughs> uh, that just seemed, that seemed very, uh, an odd note. Right. You'd uh, say that if that was, you know, uh, Star Wars canon, Game of Thrones canon, you would say that acknowledging that it is fictional otherwise you would say if you were talking about uh you know the the history of uh, actual civilization you would say this was not you know uh, cohort cohort was a part of roman history not roman canon <laughs> right i mean the canon being a collection of works about it but the canon is not referenced so he's Im- either implying yes that it's fiction or that I can't wait to read that canon, whatever it is. So. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that was bizarre. But yeah, again, she she sort of, he didn't reveal that to her. She guessed and he was like, you got me. I'm reading mine, but I can't read yours. So she had to somehow piece that together by watching him uh, sit there not breathing in biology. Yes. I also like uh, the, uh, he sort of, uh, 
he's he's like thinking that he might be dazzling her, but then he's saying something like, uh, "You don't feel dizzy, sick, cold? Should I? Well, I'm actually waiting for you to go into shock." She would not want to be taken care of. It took her a moment to answer me. Her eyes were slightly unfocused. She looked that way sometimes when I smiled at her. Was she dazzled? So he goes from uh, worrying that she's going to go into shock from the mob assault he narrowly prevented to then just, you know, typical Mike Newton uh, horniness, uh, hoping yes. that he's dazzling her within the span of three sentences. <laughs> Mike was uh, coincidentally reading his mind at that point and giving him like the two thumbs up and the giant douchebag smile. Yeah, <laughs> that's how you do it, man. <laughs> Um, and then one other thing of just uh, really keeping up his, his A-plus cover story, he says, uh, nothing for me. Bella made a slight face. Hmm. She must have noticed that I never ate food. So, like, th- that, plastic surgery rumors, all the other things. You've just uh, really, you might as well just drop out your uh, signed copy of, of Dracula or something like that, signed by Dracula. Yes. Uh, being at school half time, uh, being yep. the same age as your dad, uh, <laughs> your brothers and sisters making out in the, in the uh, lunchroom. Yeah. Yeah. Incognito. <laughs> uh, my final note. He had just bagged on her skin, remember? And now mm. her lips, her skin, they look so soft. I wanted to see if they were as velvety as they appeared. I was thinking that they were like parchment paper yeah. or, you know, tissue but now, now they're all velvety. Yeah, so. like the sort of uh, the stuff that yeah you bake on is that parchment paper. Yeah, yeah, vaguely right. translucent, Thin, like waxy. Translucent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, just get it right, Edward. Come on. Yeah, um, yeah, but I, I think that it's a uh, it, it ends with him uh, driving back to to town with her, and uh, he worries that uh, she's Persephone, pomegranate in hand, dooming herself to the underworld. And he's Hades, and so that's what's on the cover, that big, gross uh, pomegranate that she's holding. So they don't, even, they don't even leave that for you to wonder about the symbolism of. They just, like, just slam that down your, your throat uh, just in case that was something you were going to miss. I actually didn't, I didn't know the legend of that, so that never, right. never occurred to me. I didn't either, but, like, uh, <laughs> if, you were, if you were versed in that kind of stuff, maybe you would have noticed it ahead of time. Sure, sure. Well, All there right. it is. Yeah. That's a, a bunch of words coming so at you. So many. Oh, my God. But uh, we still have time for a few more. Let's not do any emails. We do need to do some dumb sentences, however. A sentence begins with a capital letter. A capital letter is a letter that's big. A capital letter is not a small letter. A capital All right, dumb sentences of the week. Uh, you probably have more than I do. I think I'm down to only one, and we'll see one if non-burn. it survives. All right. Well, yeah. let's do it. This one, the first one is from Colin. I took the final hairpin turn at 90 miles an hour. He says, Mario Andretti couldn't do this, and you can't either, Edward. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I guess vampires, they can drive better too, uh, probably because Rosalie's uh, souping up their engines. This one's from Gina. I wish there was some way I could ask her to continue with the threats of death and bodily harm without sounding insane. He said, I'm guessing there probably isn't. <laughs> Uh, Steve submitted for the second time tonight I confess to an intended murder we have uh, IJC it was my habit now to simply not breathe at all in biology Um, so again cover story is really uh, really really (laughs) holding up this one is from Hayden this one was I didn't notice it but it made me laugh when they submitted it the words burst from me stormily (laughs) (laughs) that's uh, that's pretty much my immortal right there yeah. Uh, this one is from Elizabeth. Uh, I leaned against the trunk of a young hemlock and settled in to wait for stray meteorites. Don't, don't, just remember, the meteorites are metaphors. Metaphors for stray bears, of course. Yes. Uh, this one was submitted by Augusta and Andrew. I was surprised watching Bella stumble through the day, tripping over cra- cracks in the sidewalk, stray books, and most often her own feet, that the people I eavesdropped on thought of her as clumsy. I think Augusta said, Edward displays a real Susan Fletcher level of genius here. As he <laughs> watches everyone with surprise, think that this clumsy girl is very clumsy. Uh, Lucas submitted, the rain was pounding down like a million tiny hammers. This has the Dan Brown problem of making an analogy that is so unusual and specific in its imagery that it's more distracting than helpful, he said. Uh, Mike submitted, her room was small, disorganized and cluttered, but not unclean. 
And Mike said, not to go all Marie Kondo, but generally a room that's disorganized and cluttered isn't clean. When someone says, I need to clean my room, they're typically not talking about hosing fecal matter off the walls and chasing out the leper colony that sprung up next to the dresser. <laughs> uh, Jay submitted, staring at her mouth made me feel strange. Emily, oh. yeah. <laughs> Emily submitted, I did some research on the internet. Uh, she said, I'm not sure how Stephanie remembers, Stephanie Myers remembers what the internet was like in 20, 2005. Uh, it, but it's redundant to say I did some research on the internet. It was taken as read that the internet was going to be part of your research. Uh, we have one from Sam. Again, I had to, I had the instinct to place myself between her and Jessica's angry thoughts. And he says, I have not read the Twilight books. Do they explain how someone places themselves between a person and the subject of their thoughts? I do not imagine they do. We certainly don't gain any insight to that from this perspective. Uh, we have Justin. I'd never paid much attention to a human's diet before. And he said, this guy has multiple medical degrees, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Janelle submitted one I meant to do this as a challenge but we don't have time she snorted delicately and uh, Alex submitted obviously the meteorite was just a metaphor for all the unlikely things that could go wrong and he said thank you wow. Stephanie I wasn't following your metaphor until you explained it to me outright much like that uh, Persephone myth I guess let's see wow, if I have any yeah. that weren't uh, oh yeah I have some all right um, I had mind reading was not a facet of vampire canon <laughs> But then I had just this one. It's just is it's it's teen poetry. Could a dead frozen heart break? Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I uh, I should check uh, the uh, my chemical romance wiki for the answer to that one. Yeah, is that it for your? That's it. That's it. Okay, I got one again. It's you know you're sweeping up so. Don't don't get too excited. Okay. But I just again standing by itself. And though I couldn't have her, just the dreaming of having just the dream of having her made it impossible for me to go on a killing spree tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously some madman's diary, the yes. guy at the Chicago World's Fair or whatever. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah. Wow. Bizarre. Woo! All what right. a ride. What a ride. Yep, we got uh, more ahead of us, too. So thanks again for everyone who wrote in, submitted dub sentences, submitted fanfic, supports us on Patreon. We'll uh, delve into the next 40,000 words of this and, and get it back to you sometime soon. Don't go crazy. Don't go on any killing sprees. Watch out for stray bears. Uh, they're everywhere. They're ever. They're like meteorites. It's almost <laughs> like it's a metaphor. Uh, yeah. Thank you, everyone. It's been uh, it's been a pleasure, and we're soldiering forward with this. I'm kind of enjoying it a little bit more as it go on. Mm -hmm. Just the insaneness of the plot, uh, you yeah, know, coming back to me fresh. Like, of course, I saw the movies and I know what it is, but just I don't know. There's something about the drilling down of it and really being specific. That's like, all right, I'm yeah, yeah exactly. And yeah, and we haven't even gotten in touch with Jacob yet, so we've got that to look. I know to. there's not even a single shirtless <laughs> werewolf. So that's all to come. Uh, thank you, everyone, again to our Patreon people and all the listeners. Much appreciated. Michael J. Nelson here. Connor Listoka. See you next time on 372 Pages. We'll never get back. <laughs> And he's like, what's wrong? Are you okay? <laughs> like, no, I'm not okay. Everything okay? No, it is not. Oh at dear, all. what happened? We're gonna have to we're gonna have to edit that out. <laughs> Holy <laughs> lose a glass of something? I uh let me make the note first. I put my uh I have a very solid jar of change that I put uh -huh. my microphone on to lift it up, and I stepped on the cord Oof. and pulled the whole thing off, and it hit the metal bar on my desk <laughs> <laughs> and shattered. There's wow. Glass, there's glass everywhere and hundreds of dollars in change everywhere. <laughs> wow. Here, I'm going to kick it so you can hear. I'll put this as an Easter egg. At the yeah, that'll be fun. At the end of it. Wow. All right. No, nothing. No, I just no need cuts. a prop. Hang on. I just got to prop the uh, mic up for a second here. One, one sec. Figure out something. Whoo! That's fun. Oh God! There's glass Jeez. everywhere. Uh huh. All right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Wild. Wow. That does. Uh, that's not something you see every day.
It's going to take a lot. Jeez. All right. So where do we Let's pick see. it up? Um, I'll, I'll do it. Um, all right. 